Back at it again. I'm back at it like a crack addict. That's what we're doing. With some anime games. <laughs> um, I'm trying to figure out if the game is too loud or not. What am I gonna do, Doki Doki Plus? I don't know, I wanted- I initially wanted to do it after I saw the hype die- uh, die down. But it still might be too soon. Maybe? Maybe December? Earliest? If we're not too busy doing other stuff? How am I feeling, by the way? Oh, I'm feeling better. But for some reason, I, like, for some reason, I have a cough that just decided to stay. And it's not really a cough, more as a, like... Like, for some reason, I get, like, spit in the back of my throat? I don't know what the hell that's about. That's pretty fucking weird. Maybe I need to drink more tea. I've been smoking. I don't smoke. I never smoke. Closest thing to smoking I ever came to was secondhand smoke, and that's because everybody around me goes like, Yo, we ain't gonna smoke, bro. And I'm like, nah. These lungs are crystal clear for the most part. I'm just gonna turn down the sound a little bit. Very tiny. Very slightly. Very little. Alright. <coughs> so, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to more Course Party. I was supposed to finish this playthrough about two weeks ago. I believe we are on the last chapter, or... Let me see, what what the hell am I at? Chapter 7. In Hinoe's room. Wait, is that the last save point? Yes, chapter 7 in Hinoe's room. New chapter. Oh no, we fucking beat chapter 7. We're on chapter 8, so we're basically on the last chapter. By the way, I'm doing great tonight. Um, was supposed to finish this game about two weeks ago. See, what had happened was... Uh... About two weeks ago, that's when I did the... Vampire the Masquerade stream... For that night, because I didn't want to... Read a bunch of text while I was still feeling a little iffy. Then, the week passed, or whatever. And fucking, I just, the whole entire week, I just, I was just tired. I'm gonna be honest, I was just tired. A lot of unforeseeable things happen. Hey, SB, how's it going? It's been a long time. It's been a long, long time. Rocket Man. I'm a Rocket Man. Blasting off. Alright. <laughs> I've been watching a lot of Family Guy. Finished the whole, finished the whole series. Caught up. Caught up on Family Guy. I never thought I would say that in my life. But anyways. Um, finished, uh, fin what the hell am I saying finished for? What the hell is wrong with me? So, uh, last week, what happened, I was just so damn tired, uh, a bunch of unforeseeable things happened. In my life, that causes a lot of headaches, one of those being something you might be able to hear right now in the background, uh, apparently, for a whole month, my mom's been bugging me about about like what kind of dog do I want and you know I kept saying I'm like eh, I always wanted like a Basanji or, or Shiba but living in the Gehetto you know that most people aren't having like Basanjis or Shibas around so out of nowhere my mom just brings like what they call a Yorkie what I'm pretty sure is a Picard so now I have a puppy in my house that motherfucker's little bastard's locked up in his cage so he's probably barking his lungs out right now because he's still small and he needs to know how to control himself. <laughs> uh, by the way, I already I'm already in a house with three dogs. I don't know why the hell they asked me. They kept bothering me about this dog, so I might have a new dog or not. I'm not sure. Right now, we're just keeping it for the weekend. Bring the dog out and show you. I will not do that. A because I do not have any cameras plugged up, and B. Because the moment I bring that look, he's actually a pretty good dog. The only thing he needs to learn, is, only thing I need to train him with is, uh, whenever I put him in the cage, shut the hell up. Because he wants to be let out. And also, just gotta 
uh, perfectly potty train him. Other than that, he's pretty good. He has a pretty good temperament and stuff like that. Um, he listens. He's very attentive. He's eager to learn. So that's interesting. Uh, but the moment I take him out, he's going to be pretty nice and chill and quiet. And then um, if I try to put him back, he's going to not shut up for a long time. So, and I don't want to fucking, I don't want to like show him off or anything. Because I'm not even sure if we're keeping him or not. Right now, we're just watching him for a weekend or a week or something like that. And we might keep him. We might not. I'm not sure. It's really not up to me at this point. But if we do keep him, I know it's going to be up to me to train him because no one else trains dogs around here besides me. <coughs> so that's fun. Uh, other than that, um, I did put up a poll on the YouTube channel. Some of you guys might know. Uh, on on like a, a series marathon or whatever. So far, Pokemon's in the lead. So at some point, at some point, the YouTube channel will become a goddamn Pokemon channel. What's the dog doing right now? He's in his cage. Right now, he's in his cage. He's quiet. Um, and I have my other two dogs behind me. And the moment he starts barking, they're gonna start barking. So that's pretty fun. Um. Shit. So, I have the poll up on YouTube. Right now, Pokemon is in the lead by Landslide, so at some point, if, uh... I'm not even sure if the, YouTube, if the um, poll is still active. I'm not sure how long YouTube polls stay active. Maybe, like, two weeks or something like that. It's fucking weird. I should have done it on Twitter or something like that. I don't know. But, um... So, Pokemon's in the lead. At some point on the YouTube channel, Pokemon's gonna be... pretty much a mainstay. <laughs> for a while. And we're not going to be starting with the new Pokemon, Diamond and Pearl or whatever and stuff like that. We're going to be starting with old Pokemon once we start doing that. Like old ass Pokemon. So, hope you're excited for that. Other than that, I do have... I have been trying to work on another video that's fairly different from what I do on the channel. Something that's not gameplay related. Uh, and... Some of the stuff that I need for that video is right behind me. It costs a good ton of money. That's around around like 300 right off the bat. And I have to buy some equipment here and there. And I might be doing it with some other people. No one of note. No famous people or nothing like that. Just some friends. Um. Other than that. Other than that, right now, I'm just uploading. Up now, I, uh, right now, I need to upload the last... The last or sec or two last episodes of Danganronpa V3 on the YouTube channel, and then fucking um, right now Scooby Doo Night of a Hundred Frights is going up on the YouTube channel as well. That playthrough is done. I recorded it way back in the beginning of October until my whole schedule got fucked up. And while that's happening, I'm also recording uh, two other playthroughs that will be coming out pretty soonish. So yeah. That's how I'm doing. My life is very stressful. On top of that, I'm just dealing with a shit ton of work. But, with all that said... Let's play some goddamn corpse party. Let me put my... I'm gonna put my keyboard up here. I don't think I need it. Using a controller with this. Blood Drive, Chapter 8. Tides severed. Ties mended. Oh, that don't look too good. So, what I remember what happened on the last time we streamed Corpse Party. Everyone died. Besides Ayaka. Ayaka? Why the hell did I say Ayaka? That's someone else. Besides Ayumi. Um, everybody died. <laughs> uh, they all got crushed. Um, what's her name? Aiko got her head cleanly bitten off. Fucking, um... Magica Madoka style. You guys remember that? You guys ever watched Madoka Magica? What was her name? The girl that got her head bit off? <laughs> what was her name? Like Mommy or something like that? I don't remember. She was blonde. She got fucking killed. It was brutal. Um. So that happened. We got sent into the real world. The real world got taken over by a bunch of fucking ghosts and shit. And then we came back here after cutting ourselves to, um, <laughs> I 
we cut ourselves to get the the book of shadows because it was stuck inside her body or something like that and we need to prove that we need to prove that we really wanted it so that's what we did we cut ourselves got the book obtained the power came back with uh, our stand fucking Sachiko she became our stand for like a brief second Came back to Heavenly Host, everybody was still dead, Sachiko was like, Hey man, I can use my stand power to the world this shit, do some time traveling. So then we did that, and then, uh, Sachiko's spirit died. So we don't have a stand no more, and we're all by ourselves, and right now, we need to rush our asses to the top of the bell tower, so everyone doesn't die. Also, we don't know what the hell happened to Yuka. She got kidnapped, and then we never heard from her again. Her friend died, though. Pretty gruesome. What is this? The floors and the walls are completely covered in... Ugh! I don't even want to know what that is. The school's still here, at least, so time really does have, have to seem... Eh. Time really does <laughs> seem to have reverted. But this is definitely very different. What was that one theory I was reading about? If time has ever turned back, you leap over the rails into the whirlpool of destiny or something like that? What the fuck are you on about, Ayumi? Things will never be exactly the same. Another tremor. I need to hurry. That light I saw means the seventh pillar is being born. Also, do me a favor and let me know if the game is too loud. Because audio balancing for a chorus party is a pain in the ass. Because sometimes it's very quiet, other times it's very loud. If I don't intervene, Misuto will use his false book of shadows to destroy everything all over again. Alright. So right off the bat... Just gonna save over that. And I assume we just need to run our asses up to the bell tower if I... What the hell? Was that a tripwire? Son of a bitch. That was really hard to see. I any items on me? None at all. Okay. That's nice. That door will open up. Oh, no. What the hell is that? A talisman. That's what I need. Look how shiny the floor is. Jesus fuck. The gleam and glisten of all this meat and blood. You know what it reminds me of? If you guys ever watch, like, the original Naruto series, the moment when Itachi shows up and fucking Jiraiya traps him inside, like, the toad stomach or something like that. That's what this reminds me of. That had to be like one of the coolest moments of Naruto ever. Back when Naruto wasn't the piece of shit that it is now. Just, just, hey, Master Jiraiya opens the door. Itachi's just standing there with no explanation. <laughs> Little to no explanation. All right, you come over here. Oh, there's a tripwire over there. I try to try to run around the spirit, but then I just said fuck it. Then I just said fuck it, you know? Just kill the damn thing. Batteries, that's a good thing to have. What the fuck? Look at me! That rarely happens. Huh. I remember like, way earlier in the game, they're like, be careful where you step, tentacles will pop up. And it barely ever happens. I think, it'll, I think that might have been like, the third time it happened. In totality. Trying to explore and see. 
I want to see if I can just grab some items to just prepare myself. Most importantly, I want to grab, like, healing items. Wait, what? It didn't ask me- oh, there we go. I was like, it didn't ask me if I wanted to override it or not. Gave me a bit of a heart attack. It healed me. That's nice. So, this stream might be a little shorter. Depending on how long the chapter is. <coughs> Depending on how long the chapter is, because honestly, besides Cord's Party, I have nothing else planned for tonight. And... I'd rather not get into Masquerade tonight. Not because I- not because I don't like the game, just because i rather... If I have some extra time tonight, I'd rather use that in recording some other stuff. So, who knows, the stream can be 30 minutes, 40 minutes, an hour. But what matters is that I'm here, right? I'm here with you guys. I'm here with you every step of the way. You're here with me every step of the way. Until you decide that my stream is boring and then you leave. <laughs> and you say, you know what? Why am I wasting my time here? <laughs> By the way, speaking of wasting time, I'm surprised this dude never came to life. I've been waiting for him to like, just get up, grab the hammer, and just, you know? Hammer time, baby. Like, what's up? What's up with that? Never happened. Never happened. This is a big ass fucking staircase. Jesus. Doesn't help that Ayumi has like no stamina. Oh my god, Aiko, you're still alive! How marvelous. It's the seventh pillar. The Sephiroth of knowledge. Sephiroth. I made this happen with the power of my Book of Shadows. What in the world? It all begins now. Time to break this wall down and Hemley host with it. And erase you as well, Kuan Niwa. One stone to kill? Oh, so many birds. The book growling at me? <laughs> Very nice. Good boy. To bits with you, Heavenly Host Elementary. No! Huh? The fuck was that? Stop! You have to stop this! Please, don't kill her. This has nothing to do with this. I. How pathetic. I. Somebody stop it! My favorite character! Did I come back with Super Saiyan powers? What's going on here? When Aiko opened her eyes, she found me standing in front of her. I had one of my arms outstretched. Outstretched? Is that a word? <laughs> Obviously having blocked something with it. My arm had protected Aiko from the charging mouth, almost as a shield would. Now I am the shield hero! Are you okay, Aiko? Yes? Good, stay that way. Don't die. If you die, I would be very saddened. Ayumi? What- what power is this? <laughs> The most anime shit ever. I love how this game series started out with just some dumbass fucking teenagers and a kid going to like this, doing a fucking seance and ending up in this fucking horror house of mysteries. And now, and now we just totally Dragon Ball their way all the way up here. Turns out that Ayumi's actually an alien. And she has superpowers. Shinozaki? Class rep? Shinozaki, you. That's right, bitches. I am now Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan. Of course, Kishinuma, Mochida, Nakashima, and Miss Kuan were all there too. Forget about Aiko, though. Thank God, everybody's still alive. That filthy brat in the red dress isn't with you? 
Something's wrong. What's going on? Ah, oh, I see. Your aura's color is a little off. It's got the hue of someone who's repeating a moment in time. How the fuck do you know what that is at a glance? Have you done it before? You can tell that, can you? Huh? Did you just laugh at me, bitch? You think you can fuck with me? I'll mess you up, you little piece of shit. What the fuck was that? <laughs> Put so much force in a slap that you just knock your own self out? You little... Just stop. Your plan ends here. I wouldn't be so cocky if I were you, Ayumi Shinozaki. Just who do you think I am? I'm the one destined to rule here. The surviving member of the Yagora... I hope I'm saying that right. Yagora, the last Misato. The last Misato? Was there multiple? Is that so? You are so dead. I'm gonna fucking kill you, Ayumi. With the wisdom of the witches. You just don't get it, do you? Stand down, imposter. What? Why do you have that? You told me it was gone. Were you just playing a sick joke on me? As if he were in any position to excuse... To excuse? To accuse... <laughs> accusing me of deception. I'll be taking back the context of the book now. That's a scary book. Ew! Oh my god! <laughs> it just starts munching it up. My Book of Shadows roared and bit hard into the flesh... Into the flesh. Into the false Book of Shadows. Huh? Stop! Misto was in total panic. But it didn't stop. It wouldn't. The Book of Shadows, my Book of Shadows, completely devoured the imposter. Damn you. The Book of Shadow's tongue stretched out like a whip, cracking itself into Misato. You need to stop. He'll eat you if you know. It'll eat you too, you know. Hey, Satoshi. I'm gonna pin him down. Help me out. You bet. Hold still, okay now? Burp. <laughs> it's over. You're too much of a danger to anyone. What's that piece of paper? <laughs> You're too much of a danger to anyone, so we're gonna tie you up. I produce a handkerchief from my pocket. I'll do it. But she'd have tied Misato's wrist together. The guy with, like, superpowers? You're gonna tie his wrist together? Good job. Like, even without the Book of Shadows, he still had enough force to, like, knock someone halfway across the room. Another earthquake? That doesn't seem good. Are the pillars still coming? Why? We stopped the Sephiroth from activating. It's not over yet. The Sephiroth has now merged with the livestream. <laughs> Did you really think you can you can hold down the Nirvana all by yourself? The Nirvana that's been gathering eaten by the book does not represent the whole of the Book of Shadows. I told you before, didn't I? The Nirvana has a core separate from the from that which gives shape to Heavenly Host, and that core possesses a consciousness all on its own. The core has its own consciousness? Is that what Sashiko meant by the person in Nirvana's core? Oh yeah, apparently there's another person here, I forgot. Which is not Sachi. The core's thought will activate the Sephiroth of Knowledge, fusing the real world of the Nirvana as one and bringing it to its knees. With or without my intervention. My goal, my goal in all of this was to gain control over the... Oh, they're d oh, fucking shit. Decidingly berserk core of the dimension. Decidingly? That's a word. 
But you stop that from happening, leaving no other outcome for your world than a gradual, disorderly, and chaotic destruction. So, what are you gonna do about it? I guess I'll just die. I'll do what you couldn't. I'll finish it. I'll complete this book. Is that so? Well, let's see what you can manage then. Let's see if the little coward who always relied on her big sister and her friends has finally grown a spine. The Book of Shadows core sleeps somewhere in the Narfana. Just try to confront the will of the witch to create this book. See what happens. A normal human would go mad a hundred times over. The prospect of us going mad seemed to, seemed to amuse him. He smirked. Mochita, Nakashima, Kishinuma, Miss Kuon, and Aiko. Thank you all for coming here. I'm truly happy to have friends like you. But you all need to return to the real world now. Do you have a way back? We're all set. The spirit charge on my Ever After Stones is almost at capacity. So we can finally get home? That's great to hear. What about you, Shinozaki? I have something I need to take care of. What is it? Whatever it is, you can count on us to help help out, Shinozaki. We came here to bring you back, after all. Isn't that right, everyone? <laughs> Isn't that right, everyone? Fucking Aiko just sits there and goes, Nah, bitch, I'm going home. I ain't come here to bring her back. Came here to make some money. I fucked up. That's right, class rat. No, I'll be fine. I'll head back on my own soon. No way, no how. Let us help you, Shinazaki. It'll go faster if we all do it than if you just do it by yourself. Huh? Nagashima? What's wrong? What happened, Naomi? Huh? Can no one else see her? Well, that was interesting. What's wrong, Naomi? Suddenly, the vision flashed in Naomi's head, as if she were seeing through someone else's eyes for a moment. Okay. Huh. Oh shit. Well, there's Yuka. She's locked up in a dungeon. I'm scared. Somebody help me. Naomi. Hey. Snap out of it, Naomi. Satoshi? Naomi? Thank goodness. This is bad. What do you mean? What happened? Just now, I... Naomi? I saw a girl in a black just now. She jumped down from here. A girl in black? Were her eyes black too, by any chance? Yeah, they were. I didn't see anything. Did you, Satoshi? Nothing here either. It was Sachi. Huh? Sachi? Sachi goes twin sister. The spirit of an unborn baby who died in, 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 ut in utero. Fuck, I cannot say that word. I bought these here from from Mikane Shinazaki's home. Mikane, why did I say that? Me, um... Makina, that's her name. I can't... The hell's wrong with me. I brought these here from Makina Shinazaki's home without thinking, and in doing so, I brought Sachi's spirit over to the... from the real world... as well. <coughs> I feel a little bit... a little congested. <laughs> teeth? They look like baby teeth. Yeah. She's a strong, evil spirit who's been eating away at the world around her indiscriminately for some time. 
My company have been after her for quite a while now, and it seems her powers have increased quite significantly since coming to this dimension. Those might just serve you well as protective charm. I think you should hold on to them, Ochita. But, Shinazaki, if I have them, you won't... I have this book. Miss Kuan, I just saw what the girl in black saw from this eye. Naomi removed the patch from her left eye. Her injury hadn't healed in the slightest. She now has the true sight. <laughs> her left eye was clouded over with blisters blackening the pupil that spelled out the name Sachi. That looks bad. Oh, thanks for your input. Thank you. Thanks, Kishinuma. We needed that. Naomi, you... Nakashima's eye is the result of, spirit, of a spirit's will literally burning itself into her. She's been using eye drops made from holy water. However, however... Oh, God. <coughs> That's a cough. A violent one. Made from holy water. However, so she would fully recover in time. What the fuck? Why is the however there? It doesn't need to be there. Sounds like I'm having a stroke. The image she saw, however, may in fact have been a reflection of what the spirit itself is seeing. If that's the case, then Satoshi, the Sachi girl went into the underground bomb shelter, and I definitely heard Yuka's voice in there. If it's a bomb shelter, why the fuck do they have a dungeon? What? That's impossible. She should be at home right now. No. No, she is most certainly here. You. Satoshi Mochita, your little sister's such a very doting girl. When I told her that her big brother was in danger, she wasted no time at all following me to this dimension. Kind of like she did in the first game. You would think that she learned her goddamn lesson by now. Is Yuka seriously here? People like you who've been to Heavenly Hills have a special aura about you. One that signifies you've been through the loop of death as here. Uh, as, as it were. Fuck, I can't speak. And she, among all of you, came into direct contact with Sanchiko and established a bond of sympathy with her, giving her quite the well of spiritual energy to draw from. Really, I can think of no, more, of no one more well suited to this world than she is. You rat bastard. I summoned her here to use as as the water convey wait what? I summoned her here to be used as the water conveyance conveyance. The fuck what? <laughs> Through which the Nirvana's core would be delivered to my new book. So she you're just using her spiritual energy as like a channeling point? I guess. Hmm. That's it. That's un... I can't even... What the fuck? Unconsolable? Is that the word? I can't even... I'm just gonna take a sip of my water. You know? Some days I lose all use of my vocabulary. Even at this very moment, I'm squeezing every last drop of spirit energy from her in the school's basement. But... Well, now that my book is gone, she's of no further use to me. So, you best hurry if you plan to get her back. Sachi's on her way there right now, after all. Jesus. Satoshi! Wait, Miss Kuhan, I'm going too. What about everybody else? How the hell are they gonna get back home? But, with your eye that way... No, I'm going. I wanted to help save Yuka as quickly as possible. I understand. Let's go then. I'll... I? You stay with Kishinuma Shinazaki, okay? Once we successfully rescue Yuka, we'll come back for you. Okay, sis. Man, Aiko really just wants to go home. She's like, I've been here far too long. I've been set on fire. I need to get the fuck out of here. Aiko was looking down and turning slightly red as she said that, and Miss Kuan did not fail to notice. Her face lit up brighter than ever. Alright, 
Kishinoma, please look after my sister, if you would. Sure thing. She actually called me sis. I can't even remember the last time that happened. Hello. Hello, child about to die. Let's not dilly-dally, shall we? Does your eye hurt? You look like you're suffering quite a bit. Hold on just a moment. Here, I brought some eye drops. Hopefully they'll help keep the pain under control. Thanks. Shinozaki. Could you join the search party too, Kishinuma? You never know, we'll be down there. The more guys, the better, I think. But what about you? I'll be fine. I have the book. This jerk can't intimidate me no more. Well, you certainly seem confident. I'll be back in a jiff. And then I'll bring some peanut butter. Alright, Misato. Ayumi. Hey, Ayumi. Untie me. Just sit still. When everything's all over, I'll take you back. Are you serious, Ayumi? Yeah, I think if somebody like this must have people who miss him if he was gone. Like hell I do! The fuck's wrong with you, bitch? I don't need your pity or your charity. You think you're so much better than me, huh? Mizuto suddenly began to act hysterical, as if my words had struck a nerve somewhere deep in this core of the soul. Aiko was not amused. She stared him down and easily won. He quickly regained his composure, however, and took a more casual, more relaxed posture. His tone almost made it sound like he was getting ready to strike a deal with us. Tell me, Ayumi. Do you know what the driving force of this world is? It's malice. Malice is the heart of one person, as he knowingly deceives another or the genuine wish for misfortune to befall one's fellow man. It's really no different from the... It's really no different than a curse. But unlike curses, it's not the hated... It's not the hatred of the victim that spawns it, but that of the assailant. I could hardly wait to see where this was going. I was ready for him to throw me a curveball and try to trick me into helping him, and all I could think was, good luck with that. See? The spiritual organization my grandpa built, Yagora, fell into ruin. My asshole ancestors, who had no ability to speak of, I should note, were persecuted as heretics. But leaving the Book of Shadows to fall into the hands of a dangerous organization of black magic pra practitioners, like Martua's tomb, just had bad news written all over it. That's what Gramps thought anyways, so he stole the Forbidden Tome, smuggled it away from their grubby hands, and secretly entrusted it to the Shinozaki family. Everything he did, he did to save the world. He was practically burning with righteous fury. But naturally, his peers thought he was nuts. They called him, at best, a fake, a swindler, or a downright monster. They even burnt his house down. Don't know exactly how he died, but I know he really was nuts by then. Lost his marbles and died while running away- while running- while running around town like a chicken with his head cut off, I hear. His son, then my father, committed suicide. As did my mother, wrapping things up for the townsfolk all nice and clean-like. And no matter where I move since then, they always been pieces of shit tracking me down breaking my windows, cursing my family's name. It was starting to get really old. I shrunk back a bit. I definitely wasn't expecting this from Misito, nor was I quite certain how to react to it. After my parents died, reporters started swarming my house. Day after day, they were eating this shit up. They tried to catch me off guard and turn anything I say into news stories with headlines like Creepy local couple commits suicide Infiltrating the hair-risen occult home What the fuck? The hair-rising occult home They asked me if my parents ever told me their regrets or if I had any juicy stories of horrible family misfortunes 
At one point, one of them even held up a sheet of loose leaf paper that said something like, it doesn't matter if it's true or not, as long as it's entertaining. But the thing is, despite what the press seemed to think of them, my parents never once cursed the world. His eyes were swimming. I didn't get the sense that he was lying about any of this. Every day at three, they give me a piece of gum to chew on as a treat. Even though they had no money whatsoever, it made me so happy. It always got me to stop crying. I fell for him. I genuinely fell for him. One day, before I consciously realized what I was doing, I doused one of these paparazzi assholes in, in lighter fluid. And set the fucker on fire. Wound up getting me thrown in juvie. Now, just try and tell me your ancestors weren't exactly the same as mine, Ayumi. And it's not just us. Jealousy. Pride. Bullying. It's all the same damn thing when you get down to it. Practitioners like us aren't the ones responsible for the curse. We're not the ones spreading misfortune. It's the piece of shit peasants who are scared of us to, root, to the root of all this. But hey, let's just... Wait, let's just... Wait, what? I had a stroke. <laughs> but hey, that's just what it means to be different from ordinary humans. Right, Ayumi? That's what the real world's like. If you're different, you're, 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 what the fuck? You're, what the hell is that word? <laughs> a para? A, a, a pariah? Pariah. Pariah? Why do they, why do they choose the most unrecognizable words? You could have said anything like parasite, heretic, something. God damn it. I don't like the way Dad and Mom talked about what you decide to do with your life, sis. It was all... It was all decent... God. <coughs> it was all decency this, and keeping up appearances that. But they were talking about you, and you always put everything you got into everything you do. It was really insulting. He you know, he flashed me a kindly smile and patted me on the head. Ayumi? You shouldn't speak ill of mom and dad. We broke off from the main line and began living peacefully in order to spare our family from what would surely be a sad fate. And it makes perfect sense for them to oppose actions that they feel might lead us down the road again. They're worrying. Uh, there weren't. Ah, uh, God. Their warning surely comes off as a place of kindness. Jesus. Time to take a sip of my water. Whenever I lose my spot in reading, just take a casual sip. You see? The curse called malice is spreading across the world, town by town. Your ancestors went through so many struggles, and look at how they were treated. What value is there in a world where superior specimens of humanity are attacked by these masses? Is that what you think people's lives are? Overpopulation has polluted the earth with pigs, and I feel it my duty to thin their numbers and... Excuse me, I had like a hiccup. What the fuck? Had a bit of a hiccup there. <coughs> Jesus. Where the hell was I? <laughs> and I feel it's my duty to thin their numbers and... And quash? Quash? Quash. Hmm. Quash their holier-than-thou ideals. But tying them down with, uh, by tying them down with fear, I can control them. Misito slammed his foot on the ground. For what it's worth, my sister never agreed with you. I still fell for him. I pitied him. A pitied fool. My eyes were starting to mist over as well. I wanted more than anything to reach him, to save him. So then I yelled out, Sasuke, <laughs> I'll save you. I'll bring you back home. You know, it was far too kind for her own good. Like, stupidly kind. We fought about that a lot. So, what you said about her being your mentor. That part's true. She was the first person I ever opened up to. Aside from my parents. 
Despite how short of a time we had together, I thought of her as a real partner in crime. She was my companion. And as someone with no relatives, that was the only time I ever felt like I loved another human being. I never met a single other person who had such an excuse for kindness and forgiveness in her heart. And I doubt I ever will again. Oh, poor you, the guy who committed murder of his own free will. And Misto's eyes became more distant. When he spoke about Hinoe, it's like he was staring into the past. His whole facial exper expression reflected such incredible loneliness. So, you and Sis were, were getting the freaky deaky. Still, sacrificing yourself to save someone else is bullshit. It's hypocrisy. Pure and simple. Hurting yourself for any reason just winds up hurting everyone else around you. Would you die in place of someone who's trying to commit suicide? Your family would be sick with grief. And that doesn't seem right, does it? I couldn't answer. I've been repenting the actions that laid my sister's uh, that laid that led to my sister's death this whole time, and I really couldn't argue with Misuto. Compassion for others is strictly the domain of superior humans, but because they forgive everyone without exception, was that exception? Yeah, exception, and they don't understand what it means to question or doubt. They get assaulted, physically, sexually for no other reason than because people are naturally malicious. This was the first I ever heard of this, and it was a hard pill to swallow. All I could remember were the smiles, and those were genuine as I could be, as genuine as, as they can be. But behind them, there have been, there have been hidden wounds caused by people taking advantage of her gentle nature in downright unfathomable ways. Oh shit, he's back on his feet. That's bad. And that sweet, kindly Hinoe is no longer in this world. Rumor has it, and she died to save a greedy asshole who was meddling in matters she couldn't possibly understand. How much does that poor girl have to sacrifice? How much pain must a superior human being like her be subjected to? I'm not finished yet. This world needs to be corrected. And it's up to me to show these peasants, those pigs, just what their sins have brought. So, what do you say, Ayumi? Untie me. You're Hinoe's sister. You wield the full power of the Shinazaki's family li lineage. You have the makings of a chosen one. Why don't we work together and untie, untie and unite this world as one? Because that's not what Sis would have wanted. Oh, shit! I expected that. Ayumi. Wrong answer. Misato stared down at me with a cold, with ice cold look in his eyes, tossing away the handkerchief that was supposed to have been tied securely around his wrist. Like I said, <laughs> like I said, the guy who can force push someone across the room, you're just gonna tie him down? Fuck that. Both hands. Does that mean he could have broken free any time he wanted? You're a fool as well. Being devoured alive by the Nirvana is supposedly quite an agonizing way to go, I hear. I was showing you mercy earlier when I tried to kill you with my knife. Wait. I'll let you in on a little secret, Ayumi. You've already been purging the world yourself, and you don't even know it. Those countless black shadow figures have been exercise has been exercising here in hell. Wait, what? Hold up. Rewind that. <laughs> Those countless black shadow figures you've been exercising here in Heavenly Host. Those are the spirits of human beings, living human beings from the real world, or formerly 
or formerly al wait what or formerly live live you mean alive what because the real world and nirvana have been fusing together human souls have been stumbling halfway and through the cracks and appearing here as black shadows which would make you i believe a murderer each time you kill one of these figures the other half of the soul dies with it. The person's body is snapped in half in the real world, dying instantly and mysteriously. I was still laid out flat on the ground, reeling from the punch and from the shock of this new revelation. I clenched my teeth and tried to pull myself up, desperately wanting to recapture this fatigue. Fatigue. Fugitive. My bad. <coughs> I wanted to recapture this fugitive, but I was too unstable to keep my balance, plummeting back to the floor right away. This is too pitiful to watch. Pitiful? Painful? Whatever. Too painful to watch. Why would you even come here when you're hopelessly unprepared? I'm off. Until the world ends, you might as well just keep on sitting right there and think about what you did. Wait, Mizuto! Don't shout my fucking name! Bitch. Most edgelord. Most edgiest edgelord anyone has ever edgelorded. See you around, Ayumi. You were a dumbass through and through. But I gotta say, you definitely take after your sis with the straight with that straight laced attitude of yours. It's the real thing. I finally have the real thing. Uh, you're supposed to be dead. If I can just return the Nirvana's core to this, the book will be complete. And I'll be like Unto, a god. Unto? What? Unto? Why'd I say that? I'll be like Unto, a god. Unto? What the fuck? What is that word? Is that a real thing? Is that a real word people use? Is that a thing? You? What do you want? And how are you still alive? It was Satsuki. She was standing directly in Misto's path. Her entire face was stained in red, with only her wide eyes breaking through. She wa she wavered in place as if as if she's oh, god damn it. She wavered in place as she stand stared directly wordlessly into Misto's soul. A moment later, Misto noticed something else behind her. One of the red helms that have been wandering the school. You two? What happened to you guarding Yuka? Why are you even here, you worthless tin can? That's... that's not good. <laughs> Suddenly, Sasuke's head split down the middle into eight equally sized portions, like a flower budding. Okay! Misto's down for the count. These petals then closed around Misto's head, tearing it clean from his body. Blood sported from his neck, and his appendages twitched. Oh, you're a bad guy. Oh. No matter how obnoxious they were in life, everyone's always so calm and peaceful when they're dead. If only you ever gotten your hands on this book. It's really a rather pathetic end, Misato. I wish I could have killed you myself, as promised. But, you see, there were always a lot of red marks here, weren't there? That's because we Mutabas? Mutabas? Mutabas. Mar Martubas. It's a weird name. Had already come to investigate. This girl you brought with you was a member of Mat Oh... Sasuke was a bad one. So, I guess this is their way of going, Eh, it doesn't matter, she was dead, she was already a bad guy. Oh well. This sucks. The Order is gonna get so cocky once they hear the Agoras are gone. I'm not looking forward to that. Maragi... Maragi. I keep calling her Maragi. Magari suddenly grabbed Sansuke's head and pulled her in. 
Honestly. I told you to stay with Yuka, didn't I, you monster? Yes, Mistress Magari. We've all been played for a fiddle. Big brother, Satsuki. Satsuki's dead, dog. Almighty God, cleanse this child's sin. Wait, what? The Lord hath spoken. No soul may reside in trees that have died. Yuko was in a seemingly empty room, though she could hear prayers echoing around her. They shouted like they shouted. They sounded like the prayers one might accept from a demonic exorcism. I'm scared. Where am I? Big brother, I don't believe it. Big brother wouldn't lie to me. He can't be dead. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, take mercy on this impure soul. Strike down this person with one firm swing of thy divine blade, O Lord. Chapter end. What? There's more than eight chapters? Okay. Interesting. Would you like to say it? Yes, I would. New chapter. Chapter 9. Oh. There's ten chapters in total, I guess. Oh, we're gonna be here for a while. Oh, no. This game is way longer than I thought it would be. At most, I thought this game would be maybe like six hours. <coughs> All right. Blood Drive, Chapter 9. Imp Imperator? Imperator? Hmm. What is this? How has the school completely changed like this? The Nirvana's encroachment is growing by the moment. We have no idea what's going to happen next. You all need to be on your guard. We can track down the Sachi. We'd be able to figure out where Yuka is, too. Right. Let's hurry up, then, and find her. We'll save you, Yuka. I swear it. Hey! Oh, that's the Switch character button. Alright. We got a whole ass party here. Are these doors, like, permanently closed? Alright. Well. Let's head over here. I feel like I'm congested. Like, every time I speak... Every time I speak, I feel like fucking... Like, my nose is getting clogged up, and I don't know why. Yeah, there's a towel here. Still a towel. After everything, it's still a towel. So if I remember correctly, watch the Sachi run. I'm gonna say it's over here. Ooh, what is that over there? Talisman. Okay. More talismans we use, the more we kill people, apparently. Oh well. Guess they're dead. Nothing I can do about it. I wonder if that affects anything. If I need to, like, avoid using the talismans as much as I can. Maybe affects an ending. Oh. Let's try it. Let's try not to use the talisman. Oh. What the fuck? Come on. Come on, follow me this way. This way. Good ookie spooky. I think this is the door that was open? Oh, what the hell is that noise? Ms. Kwan glanced at the watch on her left wrist. The digits display on it, we're counting down. What the fuck does that mean? Miss Kwan, please don't die. I like you. You're my second favorite. 
That old bomb shelter. It was the, it was this way before, right? Yeah. And this door. It's the same one I saw in my vision. The girl in black, Sachi. She ripped the boards from it with her bare hands and went inside. After that, everything went dark, and that's where I saw, and that's where the vision ended. Let's head in. Kishinuma, are you worried about Shinazaki? Hmm? Yeah. It's very kind of you to show so much concern for Yuka Mochita and join us in our efforts. But I assure you, we're fine. Won't you please head back? No. She's okay. Obviously, she's not. Another earthquake. The Nirvana's expanding, and the school is start starting. If school is straining under the pressure, the Sephiroth of Knowledge, it's very close to activating. Can you stop it, Ayumi? That which resides in the Nirvana's core is most likely something beyond the scope of hum human understanding. She's tougher than people give her credit for. She's got more guts than this school. So, I'm gonna keep believing her. Believe it, why I say it like that? You're right. This cool on Magic Kishinuma's smile. Let's go then. We have to stay sharp here as well. Don't gotta tell me twice. Can't believe we're gonna face off against somebody even more dangerous than Sachiko. But whatever it takes, right? That's right. Yeah. You guys are fucking crazy. Damn! You still throwing up? You alright, Ayumi? The book. If I don't have the book, I... Ayumi, grab onto my shoulders, okay? Alright, well... You lead the way. Let's go get that book. What is... What's with these? It's like a... It's like a magma's flowing beneath our feet. Was there any point in, in showing me that? I'm still waiting for you to come alive. I'm still waiting. <coughs> I'm still waiting. Still waiting. Hmm. It's gotta be something important. It's got to be something important. Alright. So... Where the hell do I go now? I highly doubt... Hmm. I... I'm trying to think, like... Where should I be going? First floor? Second floor? Probably maybe find where his dead body's at, right? Maybe the first floor. Oh, what's this? Oops. Batteries! I will take those. Oh, almost right into the glass. Let's be careful. Let's not do that. Ah, mother... I gotta stop doing that. There we go. So, come on. Thank you, Aiko. I'm feeling a little bit more oriented now. I can walk on my own. There's something wrong with this school, isn't there? Oh! Oh, you think? You think there's something wrong with the school? I wonder what's going on. I wonder what that glowing thing over there is. 
Yeah, something's off. Where did Misato run off to? I need to retrieve the book from him right away, or something terrible will happen. Ayumi Shinozaki? Hey! Miragi! I mean, Magari. Fuck, I keep calling you Miragi. Shit. That's that persona in my head. <laughs> so, you lost the book and... and re oh, God damn it. And reverted back to being an ordinary human being once more, have you? I could kill you so very easily now, you know? Huh? No need to be on edge. Here, I got your book of shadows back. Wait, are, are you... Are you a good guy? Are, are you bad? I don't know what to think anymore. It really... Why do I... Something feels off. Something feels off about her. I mean, besides the craziness. You know what? I'm, I'm gonna keep it to myself. I'm gonna keep it to myself. I'm going to keep it to myself. I tried to grab it, but Magari pulled it away at, at the last moment, as if taunting me. I told you before. I was ordered to retrieve this. The plan was to guide you from the shadows and steal the book as soon as you got a hold of it. Really? I'm no better than Misato. I am without a doubt your enemy. You really should kick that nasty habit of, your, of trusting people so easily. No. Though, there is one difference between that wretch and me. I'm hoping to see a little more from you. Ideally, I'd like to see if someone else will be born into this world who won't bore me to tears. Kind of like Naha was. This is the thing Naha always wore. That's right. It's her barrette. I found her body in the custodian's closet. Let me see that, Ayumi. I go snatch the hair clip from her hands. From my hands, my bad. Naho, can you hear me, Naho? You're a bitch. <laughs> I go close her eyes and put the item next to her ear, but after a few moments of silence, she just started to break down. Her spirit's gone, dog. Her soul, dead, gone, never coming back. She hugged the star and began to cry. Aiko? It's a spirit item. Aiko told you about those, didn't she? Articles belong to the spiritual gifted, like Naho. Often traps their spirit, also trap their spirits and serves as a vessel for communication. Anyways, here. Are you, are you giving that to me? Th thank you. You're the only one who can make full use of it. So you can have it, for now. Though, searching me- a uh, what? Searching me whether I'm doing you- wait, what? You're confusing. Search me whether I'm doing you a favor or not. I may have just sealed your fate. Magari flashed me a cold smile. You do know the history of the book, right? Like how it was born? Yeah, I heard about it from Sis. Well? You're now going to have to confront and seal away the Nirvana itself, I guess. In other words, you'll be pulling the, you'll be pulling that core of the book, its very well back into its pages. It all began with the genocide of a certain group 300 years ago, with the soul of the witches who were massacred in that famous witch hunt. Legend has it they communed with the devil and gained an immeasurable power to curse the world that had betrayed them. And you're gonna have to stand face to face with that power. Best case scenario, you'll go totally bonkers, but I doubt you'll get off that easy. Of course, if you fail, the Nirvana will, sp will spread and the world as we know it will be finished. So, good luck I guess. I'll pray for your success in getting the core back into the book. Oh, one more thing though. You probably already realize this, but this dimension isn't heavenly host any longer. It's now a physical manifestation of the curse from within the Book of Shadows. No clue what's going to happen in here, so be careful now. Magari? You're still our enemy, right? So why are you helping us? 
because everything got fucked up. Pardon? You saw all those red mage symbols drawn all over the school? Those were black magic spells created by members of my order. They came here on their own accord without being ordered to by any of the elite like me. And every single one of them got killed off in their troubles. They were literally in pieces by the time I got here. Like I said, fucked up, right? It pissed me the hell off. Veller sent me here to investigate, but then they went and sent another investigation team behind my back as well. The old hag who founded the Martubas clearly lost her marbles. The old hag. Is that the one that Kishinuma ran into, like, way early on in the game? Could be. And because of that, the black magic in here has, has been boosted out of control. Sachi and Nirvana had reacted to it and gone berserk. And now, guess what? Ending the fucking world. It was a lot more fun when I was going up against you three. You, Sayaka, Naho. I'm thinking it's about time I leave that shit for brain... For what? For brains order once... Wait, what? I'll leave that shit for Brains Order once and for all. Okay, so she's going solo. Anyways, I still have something to clean up, so this is goodbye for now. Ask the book how to get... Wait, what? Ask the book how to go about meeting the Nirvana, though. It's in the center of this world. This is my responsibility. You stay here, Aiko. You sure you shouldn't wait for Kishinuma and the others? I'm sure. This, more than anything, is a situation I don't want them getting involved in. And I know if they were here, they, they insist on getting involved. You need to meet up with everyone else and get out. Tell them I have the Book of Shadows, so I'll be fine. No, I'm coming with you, Ayumi. Why? It's going to be really dangerous from this point on. Didn't you hear what Magari said? It's the first, it's first favor my sister ever asked of me, and I don't want to let her down. But, I'm coming with you whether you like it or not, so don't argue with me. Alright, I'm gonna go leave a note then. Dear bitches, we went to go stop this shit. The Nirvana's not nearby, will you guide us to it? It must be the main building. Come on. The main building. Are we in the main building right now? No, we're in the... We're in the secondary building. And what the hell is this? There's something on the floor here. I got an axe. I'm about to ask you a question. Alright, do I have any talismans on me or anything like that? Old Steel Axe. Full swing might be enough to break it completely. Naho's hairpin. Soul dwells within it. Hmm. I have two talismans. Ah! You stay away. Another talisman! Haha! -ha. There's a spirit there that I didn't notice. It's dead now. Is there anything down here for me? Nope. There we go. I gotta say, I am, uh... <coughs> I gotta say, I am pretty... What's the word I'm looking for? Um, I'm pretty. Yes. No, um... Impressed. I gotta say, I'm pretty impressed with, for the most part, the layout of the school has not changed at all. But they managed to make me run all around this place for like hours on it. Naomi, I'm gonna go butter up my pooper- oh, what? 
Really? This is what we're doing right now? Okay. Gonna go butter up my pooper with it real good. Shinohara? No one was there. I just hit my microphone. But further back in the hall, I heard a sound of someone running. What's wrong, Ayumi? I just heard a friend's voice. Let's go butter up your pooper real good. <sighs> Naomi! Shinohara? In the hallway nearby, I could hear the sounds of footsteps, accompanied by a strange snapping noise. Oh no. Oh no. It's her footsteps with the snapping noise. It's her neck just flopping around. Crack, crack, crack. There's a dual spirits, huh? I remember. I heard about this from Hanoi. Spirits normally can't talk unless they're amassed enough spiritual energy or hatred. So... They communicate unconsciously. Memories of past events that meant a lot to them are played back over and over again. Like they melted into the walls. Shinohara, are you there? I felt a tear stream down my cheek. A tear? I felt a tear stream down my cheek. But that was my only answer. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. You've lost your entire existence. I never could have imagined something like this would happen. The repeating sound of footsteps, unchanged from before, somehow seemed like an answer. And for whatever reason, I found it oddly comforting, like she was my guardian angel. I'm gonna do something about it, okay? And if I die, I'll come back here again to apologize. Very strong, I strongly felt the presence right behind me. Quickly turned heel to catch sight of whoever it may have been, but unsurprisingly, no one was there. I am me. Something's following us. Is it a spirit? I'm not getting any malicious feelings from it, at least. Come on, let's go. I like Playdown Psycho. I like Playdown Psycho. I'm going, no! You stay away! Are you still chasing me? Go back. Oh, shit! I'm just gonna walk past you, and you'll be none the wiser. None the wiser. None the wiser. Am I going this way? Where am I going? Oh, I might need to head to the gym. Either that or uh, the custodian closet. Where am I? Oh! Die. You made me do it. I didn't want to do it. You made me do it. I'm gonna go check the gym. Ah, motherfucker! You gotta be kidding me. How much damage does that give me? None at all. Hmm. I want to check the gym, because maybe we might... Oh, it's been eaten away by Nirvana. Okay, well, that sucks. Um... This fucking Ouija board is still here. That's cool. For some reason, they let us come back in here and check on that. I'm 
I wonder if the core is on, like, the second floor or something. Wait, are we on the second floor right now? What floor are we on? I've been playing this game for 19 hours. You gotta be kidding me. Come on. Snap it. Snap it. There we go. Fuck you, Tripwire. Batteries! I'm gonna run over here. Maybe there's a save point. Hey, save point. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, so that seems to be... Okay. Alright, so we're heading this way. Um, that is a fresh body. A very fresh body. And I want to know what the hell that's about. Ah. Large chunks missing from left breast and left arm. Eaten by a wild beast or beast. Oh! Damn it. I saw it at the last second. Hey, bandage. I'm just gonna wrap that bad boy up. I did not mean to use those batteries. Let me just check this while I'm here. Sometimes you gotta check cabinets. Nothing over here, right? Nope. Almighty God, cleanse this child's sins. The Lord hath spoken. No soul may reside in trees that have died. Two voices. One was an angry... Angry. One was an angry, judgmental male voice, while the other was female. Unfortunately, the only entrance to the room were all sealed. The doors were affixed to the wall like models. They show no indication that they were ever meant to be opened. I heard someone in there. Someone still alive, maybe. Could be easily a trap, though. Still. Still what? They're dead. Move on. They're dead. Let's confide in Piss Bucket. Oh, how I love thee, Piss Bucket. That's not good. This must be, uh, the Salem Witch Trials. There were three corpses in the room, all hanged. The left corpse seemed to have been dead for quite some time, and it had been rotting. The middle corpse seemed to have just died, and the one on the right was already a skeleton. Beneath three unfortunate souls, something had been scratched into the floor. 23, 09, 05. Uh... No bell. Uh, uh, what? Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't know what that says. I'm not gonna pretend that I do. Some kind of cipher. Hmm. Hold up. I got this. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I got. Hold up. I got this. Got this. Hold up. All right. All right. Hold up. Hmm. Uh huh. Wait a minute. Never mind. I thought I had it. There's two, uh... There's two O's! Huh. Huh. Bell tune? No. Huh. That's the only thing I can come up with. Top of my head. Bell tune. Alright, well, let's see what's in here. Will I die? I'll die, most likely. Tight fit, but I think I can squeeze through. 
Should I go for it? The book's growling. Does that mean I shouldn't? You weren't actually thinking of going in there, were you? No, perish the thought. I'm curious, but I don't like the idea of putting myself somewhere where my movement is restricted. Alright, the book told me no. Hmm. I'm trying to think of the cipher in my head, but... Can I... I just want to examine it one more time. Hmm. 0905, that's what gets me. Alright, well... Huh. Wish I had a pen and paper. Wish I had a pen and paper with me right now. Well, let's try it like this. Um, actually, you know what? That doesn't even work. What the fuck? Hmm. Oh well. We'll figure it out somehow. And then we just go back in circles, right? Okay. Maybe we need something in there. There's a skeleton corpse here. Noose. Seems somewhat frayed, but the right tools. Somebody probably drop... Oh, shit. Okay, so one of you guys have a key. I have to choose the right one. Huh. Alright, well, if that's the case. We can just trial and error this bitch. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm getting at? <coughs> Alright. Wait a minute, hold up. Wait, wait, wait. I wanna... I do wanna solve this, legit. trying to think this one out. Hold up. I got this. I got this. I got this. <laughs> there's two there's two ways of going about this for me. Nope. Freshly hidden corpse here. New seems somewhat frayed with the right tools. Body could blah blah blah. Okay. Uh, there's a hang corpse riding away. The new seems somewhat frayed. With the right tools. Nobody could. Uh, blah blah blah. blah. All right. Hmm. If there wasn't two, if there wasn't two zeros, I wouldn't be confused about this. I honestly wouldn't. Hmm. Because I would just put it in order. Oh well, let's try with the skeleton. You're coming down with me, buddy. You might get me killed, but who cares?
Hmm. Huh. Well, I'm going to say that was the wrong body. Ow! Fucking glass. Wait, which door was it? Was it this one? Oh, open up. I'm gonna take you down. The eyes of the still hanging corpse suddenly began to glow. Huh? Oh no! I guess the skeleton was right. And then the body I dropped stood up nonchalantly with seemingly little effort immediately without warning it lunged at me. I guess the skeleton was right. Skeleton was superly right. Which one was that? That was the one on the far left. And what about you? Hiya! Huh, no reaction from you. You're still growling at me, book. I'll go see if I can find another axe. Maybe I can find myself another axe and we'll get the skeleton down. Um Okay. <coughs> it's Makina Shinazaki's room. What? But we were just in the school. The Nirvana's melting pot for the thoughts and feelings of many different things. I mean, many different kinds of people. And when the connection amongst closed spaces get twisted, these sort of things happen. Put simply, you can think of it of kind of a spirit barrier. I feel like I'm losing my mind. Now we're back in your crib. Hmm. There's gotta be something in here, right? Oh, look at that. I'm just gonna... Just gonna do that. I don't think heading outside would be a smart idea, but let's do it. Oh! Interesting. What the fuck? Well, because I don't want to run all the way back there... I'm gonna head this way. Oh! Maybe I should have waited. Something drawn on the blackboard. Well, the king seems to be on the left. The knight and the peasant, it seems. It's a picture of three hanging corpses. From left to right, they appear to be king, soldier, and commoner. Well, I tied down- I, uh, got off the knight. Guess I gotta- Oh, here's the other axe. So, Mr. Kingly, you gonna sit there and, uh, get screwed? Can I go in here? Peer through? We're just gonna walk on back, okay?
Oh, wrong button. Peer through. There's a big hole in the wall. Oh, shit. Okay. Malice. Thank you. How's my darkening doing? We're still pretty okay. Oh, that thing is still there. That's not cool. Picture of three hang corpse. Uh-oh. It is a head. What, the... the core? Door's locked. Won't open. Ayumi, there's a seal here. I'm afraid so. Let's search somewhere else. Don't worry, I got this. That thing is evil. So I guess that way is going to be evil no matter what. So we just got to get the knight and the commoner down. Seems simple enough. Uh, it's up here. <coughs> I really wish I knew what that anagram was, though. Oh, shit. Man, I'm all for tentacle loving, baby, but not right now. Not why people are watching. All right. Come on, commoner. I gotcha. The king's gonna stay there forever. He's been a bad king. You are free to go, my friends. Sound of a lock releasing echoed from somewhere in the distance. And I'm gonna assume that that's just a permanent trap over there. So we're not gonna go there. Now we should be able to head to the core. Um, this way. I should really look for more bandages, right? Eh. Uh, eh, whatever. We'll be fine. Wait a minute, how the fuck did I... I gotta go this way. I forgot. <laughs> I forgot for a second. I was like, wait a minute. To get back in there, I have to head down this way. Wait, hold up. No, I don't. Where the fuck did I go? Did I go this way? Hold up. Now I'm confusing my damn self. Ow. I... That was stupid. That was stupid of me. Why did I do that? Oh, yeah. It was a loop. We looped around. That's what happened. That's why I got confused. I was like, wait a minute. Alright. I'm not gonna check that mirror. Oops. Come on, use the candle. Good job. Aiko, you lead the way because you have the less you have the least damage, right? Oh wait, no, Ayumi's pretty good. I forget that the uh the candle restores our health. It's a head. You're a head. A head inside of a buck. Let's go. Okay. I wonder if Mochita and the others were able to save Yuka. What a terrible smell. Is that a... 
<laughs> is that body just, is that just Mochita in the corner? It's a lot different in here than it was last time we came to the school. Yeah, I thought I'd rather not think about that right now. I thought. This one looks exactly like me. But it's a researcher. Oh no, it has a different facial expression. Oh, we're not going this way. Okay. We're coming for you, Yuka. Looks like the road ends here, at this door. Well, technically, if you open the door, the road wouldn't end at all. Be careful. Uh-oh. That's not good. Beyond the red door, we found ourselves in a large open space. The smell of blood and antiseptic immediately struck our noses with incredible force, so thick that it almost felt like we were stepping into a viscous liquid environment. This certainly wasn't the underground bomb seltzer we were expecting. Rather, it was more or less a torture chamber. A labyrinth of terrifying pain... Wait, what? A terrifying pain, devices, and prison cells. The walls were spotted liberally with a dark bloodstain and the general feel, general feel of the room was absolutely horrific in every conceivable way. It hurts. God, it hurts. Forgive me. Please kill me. I'll curse you. I curse you. Damn, you guys seem to be having it rough over there. How unfortunate for you, but that is the mark of a witch. Is this how the, uh, is this how, like, the witch that, the witches that made the Book of Shadows got tortured? Almighty God, cleanse this child's sin. The Lord hath spoken, no soul may reside in trees that have died. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, take mercy on this impure soul. Strike down this person with one firm swing of thy divine blade, O oh Lord. O oh Lord! Sounds of deep, all-encompassing sorrow and rage, and rage echoed from every corner of the massive space. Some of the screams and moans of sadistic pleasure seemed to be coming from right next to us, though the room was quite dark and there was no visible presence around us, besides the heads. It really did sound like people were being tortured right where we stood, I wonder why. <laughs> I wonder why. Just crossing the threshold into the room was mentally taxing beyond anything I've ever experienced before. It was downright painful. In fact, instantly bringing tears to my eyes. Yuka, hang in there. We're coming. What is this place? It's a torture chamber. A dungeon. I don't know, but these things all over the room really look like medieval torture devices to me. Are we all just going to ignore the heads that are just sitting on the benches? I hate to think of Yuka being stuck in a place like this. Damn it. Yuka, say something. Yuka. Yuka. Uh-oh. That's not a good sound. From the darkness came the sound of a metal wheel or gear turning. Satoshi shone his light in the general direction from which the sound seemed to ordinate. Or, or, ordinate. I can't say the word. Originate. There we go. <coughs> but the only thing there was a rack, as in the torture device designed to stretch and tear a person's body. It was a highly disturbing sight, but fortunately no one was tied to it. Yet. We all let out a collective sigh of relief. Oh, that's not good. Despite being emptied, however, the torture implement began spinning in place. Ugh. Blood was flying everywhere. Is everyone alright? I think I might have caught some type of disease. What is this? The stench. It's blood, is it? 
what's that smell? Is blood. <laughs> Anybody ever play Bloodborne? <laughs> what's that smell? Is blood. God damn it. Must have stayed here for longer. We need to hurry. No argument here. Then why the fuck are you guys just standing there? Alright. Let's see, are there any items that we can grab while we're down here? There's a door- there's a doorway. Dare I open it? It's locked. Good, keep it that way. Oh! That's not good! Huh! I'm not a fan of this. Oh god, no. Oh, there's an item in there too. Why would I want that? How? Oh no. I thought I had the timing. Oh god. It's a gauntlet of bullshit. Hmm. This is gonna be a little difficult. Now! Oh, fuck! I touched the tip of it? Jesus! I had the timing. I had it. I had it, but I touched the tip. Just the tip. Just the tip. It's enough to kill me. I'm gonna have to really, like, hug that wall. There we go. What's in here? Oh, there's a mist. There's a mist in front of me, and I don't trust it. What the fuck? Is that someone's... Look at that. Look, look below. Did someone get their head put on... Is that their, like, spinal cord being stretched out? What the fuck? Oh, that's bad. Oh, I gotta look at it. Oh. The fixation to around is like a model. It shows no indication it was ever opened. I don't want to go inside. I just want to look at the body. Okay. I'm waiting for something. I don't trust that mist. I really don't. I'm not sure if it's there for ambiance or if it will actually like hurt me. Oh, there's an item in there too. You stay the fuck away from me. Oh no, there's dark shadows. Alright, well let's test it out. Yep! Oh, it teleported me. Where am I? Okay. Uh-oh. Not good. This is a bad idea. One of my worst. One of my worst. Ugh. There you go. Den key. Okay. I'm gonna assume that this is the den. Oh, this teleports me. Oh, what the fuck? Light crystal obtained. It's broken, though. The crystal that shines with the holy light. You know what, Mochita? You lead the way. Because <coughs> you barely do shit in this series as is, but for some reason, everybody's just on their knees for you. Thy holy light shall protect me. Huah! Why does that sound familiar? Yuka, 
Are you here? Yoshiki, did you see anything behind us? Yo Yoshiki? Satoshi, what's wrong? Yoshiki's not here. What? Yoshiki, where are you? Say something. Kishinuma, say something, please. Kishinuma. Ah, uh, he's a strong boy. He'll take care of himself. Where could he have gone? If we were to get separated here. What do we do, Satoshi? We should head back for now. Yoshiki? Damn it, where'd he go? What do you mean, where'd he go? Obviously, he was taken. Kishinuma, you're screwing around. I'm not gonna be real mad. Uh, screwing around, I'm gonna be real mad. Hurry up and get out of here. We listened for a response, but we heard absolutely nothing. Save for a heavy, pulsating sound that echoed through our heads like ringing after a loud concert. Are you alright, Naomi? Fucking, did you guys not realize the teacher is gone? <laughs> Yeah, but can I hold on to your shirt? You bet, and don't let go, baby. You should do the same, Miss Ku- Huh? Miss Kuan? Don't let go of the shirt, that's how you get got! No, Miss Kuan! What's wrong, Naomi? No, not the teacher, she was our favorite. Our second favorite. She was ready to get down to the business, but Satoshi's such a little wimp that he didn't want to do it. She wanted to marry this boy. I don't know why, but she wanted to. Miss Kuan's gone now, too. She was here just a second ago. What? And then suddenly... Uh-oh. Satoshi? That voice... Stop! <sighs> Oh, God. Yoshiki, where are you? Oh, that boy dead. S Satoshi? Over there. I can't tell. There's too much echo. I heard it from over there. Come on. Okay. And now she's gone, too, right? Don't let go of my hand, Naomi. Okay. Yoshiki. Kishinuma. If this is a death scene... This is pretty fucking long. Kishinuma screaming pain sporadically punctured the silence. That gate just opened on its own, huh? An uneasy feeling ran through me, manifesting itself as a shudder. Satoshi and I cautiously entered the cell. Why would you do that? Though we both remained close to the threshold. From there, he shone his light inside. It was a tiny cell with red runic letters written all over the wall, and standing all the way in the back was Miss Kulam. With wide, frightful eyes, she was staring directly at us. Oh, she dead. Miss Kulam! Satoshi lost his footing, nearly toppling over. The floor was extremely slippery. It took me a second, but I soon realized what he was reacting to. Miss Kulam was watching us. She wasn't saying anything anymore. Her body wasn't standing under her own weight, but rather impaled in place with four wooden spears. She was gone. The substance Satoshi had slipped on was the blood pooling on the ground from her now lifeless body. No. What? What the hell? That was my girl! I turned around to see Yoshiki, dead as well. His throat sliced and his tongue ripped out. Satoshi, we need to get out of here. We need to get out. Satoshi? I looked down, and I was still holding Satoshi's hand. But that's all that remained of him. The rest of his body was gone. Oh my god, that's some JoJo type shit. By the way, spoilers for JoJo. <laughs> Just like, if you're reading this, you're already dead. What? <laughs> no. Where'd he go? I don't know. I don't know where those things go. I dropped Satoshi's hands and I ran out of the cell in a panic. 
I had a crystal of holy light, guys. Without his flashlight, the only thing I can see was a distant light. No, I can't take this anymore. My voice is trembling, my feet unstable, my mind blank. And all I can do is run. That was the only thing left for me. The source of the light was a, sol was a solitary bulb in another small cell. Light. I now know, without a doubt, Kingdom Hearts is light. Oh, shit! It's a bear trap! Oh, God! Immediately upon, upon entering, however, I found myself caught in a bear trap. It closed my ankle. It, it closed on my ankle, which triggered a cord that pulled me into the air, hanging me upside down from now critically injured leg. It hurts! Of course it hurts. The feeling was excruciating as my entire body weight was pulling the steel blade deeper and deeper into my ankle. It hurts. I kept moaning and screaming as I swung there, hoping to capture someone's attention, but no one came, and there seemed to be no easy way to free myself. It hurts so much! I need to conserve my energy, to save my screams for when I knew they'd be hurt. Or at least, that was the little part of my mind that was still functioning, kept telling me. Although the internal anguish and searing trauma. But no one was coming. That much was certain. I had to do something to escape from this agony. Though I went against every instinct in my body, I bit my lip and forcefully contorted myself in a last-ditch attempt to reach my ankle. Unfortunately, my hand just wouldn't reach. And on top of that, I could hear, and very much feel, cracking as my leg bent under the force of the steel jaw. I lost the willpower to maintain such a painful posture. My body fell back into an upside-down vertical position, and the force of the sudden fall caused me to start swinging once more. The steel blades were merciless. Tears were flowing from tears. Tears were flowing from my eyes, jewel from my mouth, and blood from my ankle. My head was going blank under the intense pain. And the worst part was, there was absolutely nothing I could do. I was completely and utterly helpless. Help! Please! Somebody! As I screamed, I saw people who looked like medieval villagers surround me. They were looking straight ahead, as though they were intentionally averting their eyes to my suffering. The expression on their face were somehow very off. What I was seeing was like an unworldly vision. It was neither heaven or uh, <laughs> it was neither heavenly host nor the world I knew. I had absolutely no idea where I was anymore, nor what was happening to me. Ow! In the next moment, a violent, a violent crashing sound echoed through my brain, and my field of vision began to shake and turn upside down as I lapsed into unconsciousness. I couldn't make out exactly what it was, but something like a crowbar came at me with tremendous force. Every bone in my body vibrated, and I could feel some of them grinding together underneath, under the sudden impact. It was not pleasant. The vibration only lasted a moment, however. But the ground was now approaching, and fast. With a thud, my vision spun. I could see the feet of the villagers surrounding me on all sides, along with my own lifeless limp arm draped across the ground. This was immediately followed by a blood pouring down from my eyes like a waterfall, and then nothing. I thought the holy light would protect me, okay? Oh, wrong one. Alright, here we are. Holy light, protect me! So we're not going that way. Hmm. I guess that means we're gonna have to run through here again, right? Oh! Damn it! Uh, that's gonna be annoying. That's gonna be very annoying for me. 
Here we go. And this one over here is way easier to do. Oh, I didn't see this. Batteries! Alright. I'm gonna save this down here just in case. Just in case this doesn't work. Oh, it does. Okay, cool. Oh, what's this? There's a slot in the pedestal that looks custom sculpted for very specific objects. Like the light crystal! Almost fit, but not quite. Maybe there's something that would fit a little better. Aha! Oh no! Damn it! <sighs> I'm gonna have to, uh, try and get into one of these cages, right? Which one seems like the most painful to get into? Probably that one over there. <laughs> yep, there it is. Oh my god, I'm gonna, I'm gonna... How far does that reach? Damn it! Oh, that is not easy to do. That is not easy to do. Well, guess I'm just gonna trial and error the shit out of this. First, I gotta make it to that side, because I want to be close. I want to be close to getting the hell out of here. Oh, shit! Alright, got it. Alright. That was... that was a little difficult. Whenever I gotta do that again. Hopefully. Alright. Light crystal? You go here. Dark crystal. The Dark Crystal, now on Netflix. We must stop the Skeksis. Okay, so I placed that there. Um... I'm gonna assume maybe the shadows in my way are gone? Maybe? <sighs> I fucking hate these scythes. Oh, my fucking, my, uh... My flashlight died. Now! Alright. Cool. Got it. I'm just gonna save over here so I don't have to do that. Just in case. Hey! We're free. Ah, oh, shit. Sachi's here. Whoa. What's wrong? There was totally something right behind me just now. What? Satoshi flashed his light in the direction Kishinuma had indicated, but there was simply nothing there. Seriously? That door just opened, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. Def someone opened it from all the way over here, Satoshi. Each one of us was racked with anticipation, anticipation, apprehension. We slowly approached the room. Naomi, have you seen any other visions of Sachi since earlier? Uh, not a one. Okay, remember, anything can happen in here, so stay right behind me. I will, but please, be careful, Satoshi. Don't worry, I'm the main character. What's in here, I wonder? Yoshiki, 
You and the others keep an eye on the on things outside. Whoa, 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 hold up. You seriously plan on going in alone? Wait, I'm sorry, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> Satoshi went, stay behind me, you'll be fine. By the way, stay here. <laughs> it's better than all of us putting ourselves in harm's way. Well, yeah, I guess that's true, but I mean... I mean, is it better? Because Miss Kuan's our only way out, and separating would be a pretty bad idea. No, you won't. I see what's going on in there, and come right back out. Fine. Satoshi, you make sure you get out of there at first sign of trouble, alright? I will. Okay, I'm going in. God! It smells just awful in here. And those chains make it look like a solitary confinement room or something. Hey, Yuka! Whoa! Satoshi? Hey, Yuka, why are you just standing there all Blair Witch style? Yuka? It's me! Hey, in there! Hey! What's going on? Satoshi? Is Yuka in there? What's wrong? Did something scary happen to you? Say something, Yuka. It was almost as if she'd forgotten how to speak. Or how to move. Something was clearly very wrong. Yuka? Yuka! Let's just get out of here for now. Yeah. Come on, Yuka. Get on my back. Satoshi crouched down so Yuka could ride him piggyback style. But she simply wouldn't budge. Satoshi, stay down. You think you can carry her? Yeah. Yuka, hang in there. Aww, it's adorable. Oh, we can switch care. Well, I gotta carry Yuka. I mean, why wouldn't I? I really hope that doesn't mean my hitbox is bigger now. This is really strange. The entrance was this way, wasn't it? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Nothing but a wall here now, though. Look there. Oh! No way! This wall's moving! It's the demon wall! This is bad. At the rate it's going, we'll be caught easily. Everybody run! Whoa, whoa, whoa! What the hell? Come on, let's go! Okay. Where am I going? How fast is it moving? Oh! Oh no! Oh! 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 Ah! What kind of bullshit was that? <laughs> what? <laughs> what kind of fucking... What the hell? <laughs> Come on, man. That wasn't cool. Oh, which one was I at? Jesus. No, not that one. Fuck. Den? Jesus, fuck. That's not cool. You saw how many things they put in my way? You gotta be kidding me. Uh, what's the skip button? There we go. Just run and don't think about it. Just do it. Doing it. Doing it. Doing it well. Ah! If we get wedged in, does that mean we're trapped in here? I think it's more likely we'll be squished. We need to find an exit on the double. I see a light over there. Come on. Right behind you. Oh, we're still going. Satoshi, the hall is closing in too quickly. Let's take cover in here. Are we trapped? Yes, but we're on the verge of getting crushed, so it seems better alternative. There's no way that the wall is going to keep closing in, right? A tremendous wave of anxiety washed over all four of us. As we were trying to figure out what to do next, I found myself tipping over a, shard, a sharp stone on my, by my foot. 
It was in the shape of an arrowhead. Oh, now we're dealing with the ancient burial grounds. Great. I wonder what this is. <coughs> wow. Hey, Satoshi, shine your light over here. Huh? Back a little. There. Looks like it goes somewhere. Yeah. Might be our only ticket out of this room. But how do we get up? How do we get up that high? Even if we stood on our tippy toes, we couldn't possibly reach it. Well, give me a boost, damn it. Crackle. Oh no, is the wall coming? Satoshi was scared stiff by a sudden voice right by his ear. Who's there? He flashes light, but there's no one to be seen. What the? Ow! My eye! It hurts! Nakashima! Naomi, are you okay? I'm seeing something. What is this? You are... What do you see? Someone's back. Huh? Are you... Are you looking through Yuka? You're back. Oh, shit! <laughs> Yuka's eyes went completely black, and she and she latched all her weight onto Satoshi. Her face was no longer her own, but that of Sachi. Satoshi, Yuka's... What? Satoshi! Oh, she's choking him! She's heavier. Uh-oh. Who the hell are you? Sachi Shinozaki. I was Sachiko's older twin sister. The black-eyed Yuka began to speak while clinging uncomfortably onto, onto Satoshi's back. A vanishing twin? I heard of cases where two twins are conceived, but one dies in the womb and the other absorbs it. I was eaten by Sachiko and Mommy's tummy and erased from existence. Only my teeth remained. They were by my sister's heart, but then the doctors went and took them out. Isn't that awful? It seems so unfair for only her to be born safely. I want to go out into the world too. But I couldn't go on my own. So I looked for a human I could wear. Only they also only they all die too fast, so I was stuck. Not this girl though. She's perfect. She doesn't break, even with me inside. Uh It feels so good. Humans are so nice. I'm going to experience a lot of first times with this body. What did you do? While the possessed Yuka was speaking all this from her back, Satoshi carefully and discreetly poked Miss Kuon in the side to get her attention. Satoshi? Fucking exercise her, damn it! Here, Miss Kuon. Those are... There are... Uh, Satoshi's out, outstretched hands were two baby teeth. They were the teeth had, he had taken from the class rep earlier. Take them. He didn't speak these words with his mouth, but with his eyes. Unfortunately for him, Sachi seems to have caught on. And my first time will be a sibling murder. Ah! With that, she began strangling Satoshi. Uh. Yuka! What are you doing? Hey, stop! No, this... Let go of him, Yuka! Shit! I can't lose in her... I can't lose in her grip! How the hell is she this strong? Please stop this, Sachi! And just like that, she stopped, or rather the spiritual aspect of her vanished from our sight. She disappeared, but why? Ah, oh, shit. She's killing him. No, you can snap out of it. No, stop. My hands. Yuka, damn it. You can do it. Yuka, release your hands. Yuka? Yuka, don't make me stab you with an arrowhead.
This will keep up so Toshi won't make it. Uh, Sharp Rock. Forgive me, Yuka. Oh, you stab your own eye? Jesus, fuck. Cuts my left eye and claps onto the ground. Oh, you're crazy. I love you, Naomi. This was accompanied by a sudden bloody splash from Sachi's left eye as well, accented by her all-black eyeball falling from the socket to the ground. Oh, damn it. God damn it, Naomi. Aww. <laughs> Jesus. Still, she throws rang and rattled as he quickly inhaled as much air as his lungs could take. Ah, oh, fuck! My body twitched and I continued holding my eye with one hand. <laughs> then, <ra> <laughs> then one hand, the other hand then bore the arrowhead I used now coated in blood and viscera. Did you do this? What were you thinking? Fuck my eye, dude! Listen, guys, if Naomi don't get no dick from this, that's all I'm saying, you know what I mean? Like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Right? But, Satoshi, you gotta give it up now. That girl stabbed herself in the eye for you. And your sister. <laughs> Satoshi and Yuka are both fine. Thank God. Oh, she's not fine. She's totally not fine. Huh? Yuka? Oh, now she's getting strangled. <laughs> her eyes had rolled back into her head, giving her an almost supernatural or possibly subhuman appearance. Yuka! Stop, Kishinuma! Get her arms! Got it. Kishinuma knew, and, uh, immediately pinned her arms, doing his best to keep her still. It was cool, and then stuffed a hand towel in her mouth. Huh? Suddenly, Sachi appeared next to Miss Kuan and grabbed the Ever After Stone before anyone knew what was happening. No! Let go! I want to let you have him! Damn! That spiritual backhand! You could calm down! You could close her eyes and fell dead silent. Sachi was gone as well. The stillness descended upon the entire room. God damn. The hell's her deal? <sighs> Naomi? I'm still bleeding over here. Naomi, your eye. It's okay. If that's what it takes to save you, it's a small price to pay. Besides, that eye was starting to give me creeps anyways. Naomi, I'm sorry. I stabbed myself in the eye for you, you fucker. <laughs> May you take a look. My eye's gone. She opened my eyelid and stared intently at my injury. This was not a comfortable thing for her to do. You're lucky. Your cornea isn't damaged. So I get to keep my eyeball? <laughs> That's a relief. The white area's been cut, but your vision should be fine once it heals. You want to apply pressure for now, though. I stabbed myself in the eye for you. I'm never gonna let you live that down. The exit came down. Damn it. You're always taking things just a little bit too far. Here, I'll carry Yuka. Satoshi, you lend a hand to, to Nakashima. Alright, Naomi. I know it hurts, but you think you can go on? Yep, I'm fine. Why must innocent children like this be forced to suffer so much? Miss Kuan surveyed the room with a general look of deep concern on her face. Oh shit. Shit! She's here. We all fixed our gaze on Sachi, who stood before us, cradling her eye. Damn it! What are we supposed to do now? Sachi, take a look at this. Is it the teeth? What is that? Um, I'm gonna take a guess here. Throw those teeth on the ground and just stomp them out. It's one of Sachi's baby teeth. Shinazaki brought them here. 
Skuon crushed the tooth between her fingers until it was little more than fine powder. How fucking strong are you? Jesus fuck. Miss Kuon is really something else. Alright, Naomi, I knew I said that Satoshi gotta give you some dick, but I mean, come on. I mean, Miss Kuon's pretty cool, you can't deny that. She then opened her mouth and ate it. She stuck it- oh god. She stuck it in and swallowed. Miss Kuon, what the hell are you doing? Sachi, you'll never be born. This world is beyond your reach. It is an unfortunate fate, but it's your fate nonetheless. Return now to your mother's womb. You can come back after you've been reborn. What? Sachi disappeared and stillness descended upon the room once more. Did you just make your- did you just- wait, hold up. What? Did you just sacrifice your firstborn and now it's gonna be Sachi? Why would you want that little demon inside of you? You're gonna have a demon baby. What did you just do? I trapped Sachi within my body. She seemed to have mistaken me for her mother, so luring her in was easy. Oh man. Now, though, we really need to be going. You have to return to Shinozaki and I. Your first baby's gonna be Sachi. Jesus, fuck. You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. Come on, Miss Kwon. Miss Kwon looked down at her wristwatch. As if for it. As if for imp, 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 uh, Fuck, whatever that word is. The seconds on it were still steadily counting down. Having just dropped below 300, uh, 300, uh, 3,600. <coughs> what the fuck is this game? Would you like to save? Yeah, I got no choice. All right. I don't have my goddamn phone next to me, so I can't check the time. What time is it? Ooh. Ooh. We might have time. We might have time to finish this. I'm not sure. I hope so. Reparations. Aiko and I have progressed through Heavenly Host guided by the whims of the book. The school changed and shifted around us bit by bit. We were now faced with a peculiar marked door. Let's finish this fucking game. Oh god, there's more to do. It's way too quiet right now. Maybe I should take this opportunity to ask a few questions. So, Aiko, are we lesbians or not? <laughs> Get right to the point. Aiko, Miss Kwan's your sister, right? That's right. We Heavenly Host survivors really don't know her very well. Like, we have no memory of her. Even though she's your teacher? Yeah, so could you tell me a little bit about Miss Kwan? What kind of person is she, for example? She's pretty much perfect. Calling her a genius wouldn't have been... Would have... Would even begin to describe her. She basically is the living personification of the ultimate human ideal. Ideal, huh? See, it all started with her, uh, when her book became a worldwide bestseller when she was only 11 years old. But her success wasn't just at, in literature. She also excelled at science, math, theater, business, economics, not to mention research, publication, and management. The widespread success of PL Promotions Co. God. Company. Company. <coughs> um, incorporated. I don't know why they need both company and incorporated, but whatever. It's all her doing. That only happened. That only after. Oh uh, God! That only happened after she took over as CEO. My family, the Nilons, got rich, but beyond their wildest dreams, through the royalties from her book sales. But it's also thanks to all the money that we've grown apart. My parents ensured raising us. Ensured. 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 
Raising us in favor of using my sister's money to travel the world. An ex um, an ex an excursion. Fuck, I can't even say the word. From which they still have yet to return. Oh, I had no idea. You do still love your sister, though, right? She certainly seems to love me, but I despise her. For as long as I can remember, everything, everything, everything I ever done in my life has been on rails generously donated by her. She never even given me a chance to choose my own destiny. Oh my god, we don't have time for this! Once she and I were out at the shopping mall, looking to buy new underwear. There was an incident while I was trying on a new bra. I like this one. I think I'll take it. Hmm? She just stuck her head into the dressing room through the curtain. Oh my. And then as if that weren't bad enough, she came right on in. Oh no no no. Come on now, I. If you don't, you don't coordinate your whole ensemble, will be ruined. And don't try to tell me you're too young to concern yourself with such things. Age will pass you by and hold you down if you're not careful. I love how she's like, listen, if you're gonna get fucked, you're gonna get fucked in the right clothing. Alright? <laughs> you gotta make sure it all fits. It all goes with the aesthetics. You heard, <laughs> you heard the saying, right? The, un the unpreparedness of one's greatest is one's greatest enemies. Well, this is your moment to show unpreparedness who's boss. Try this one. She left the dressing room for only a moment, but now handed me a luxurious, elegant, lacy bra from the gap between the curtains. And this isn't... I complained, but I knew I eventually had to try it on anyways, so I just broke down and did it. See, I told you it suits you, and it's my treat, so I hope you enjoy it. Oh, you're just so cute. You'll do anything I say, won't you? Oh, God. Well, you are a good girl, so you understand that my suggestions for you are the best. Huh? Right? Kuan's smile was so pure and sweet, it was almost scary. She has all the privilege and all the pleasures of life, plus our parents love to boot. Everything goes to her, and nothing comes to me. She had me in a pretty dark place for a while, in fact, but right when things were looking their darkest, I came to discover the existence of spirit items, and I was intent instantly hooked. One thing led to another, and before I knew it, I became a certifiable occult nut. You can't even imagine how excited I was when I learned that I had spiritual powers my sister didn't. You sure about that? She seems to have a lot of spiritual energy. This is my world. It's a source of strength that I came upon, fair and square. My spirit item auction sales hit some pretty extravagant numbers, too. Which certainly helped. But then she did it again. She managed to get a foothold in this field, too and instantly became a bigger name than I was, and that really pissed me off. I had no idea. She certainly does seem larger than life. Well, you know, in all honesty, I don't really know her all that well myself. Huh? Righteousness takes to extremes can become a form of evil all on its own. And when evil gets pure enough, it can be a person's salvation. You see this in every last corner of the world. The answer to everything under the sun isn't always the right answer. You know what I mean? Well, that was nice. Let's finish this game, damn it! Space has become so corrupt it's impossible to proceed further. Oh, shit. Then this way. Back in the school. Why are there two... Oh, look at that eyeball over there, dog. <coughs> These tremors certainly are getting intense, aren't they? The school is probably starting to break down. Do you think that it's the seventh pillar? It has awakened. Who's there? It's the book. Book of Shadows is talking. The Nirvana has awakened. The Nirvana? You mean the core? The souls of the witches? And the bitches? <laughs> it can sense our approach. The pillar, too, reacts to the Nirvana. Oh no! That dude's alive? It's such a trap. It's such a trap. It's so a trap. 
It's so a trap, but I gotta. I go. Where are you going? The sensation. I recognize it. Yep. Ah! I was right. Uh, Haruki. Is it really you? Thank goodness. I thought. Oh! Use your book of shadows, damn it. Inamura had been completely overtaken by the darkening. His hatred transformed him into a feral beast. His mouth was now slit on both ends, giving him a disturbing, almost fox like appearance. Huh. That's pretty cool, I guess. <laughs> with speed and precision, he beelined right for Aiko's necks and bit deeply into it with obvious intent to kill. Oh, God. Haruyuki, I'm sorry for running away. I stole that smile of yours, so go ahead and kill me. Oh, really? You're giving up this easily, Aiko? Slap him with the book. Aiko! I caught up to the two figures when I found one seemingly trying to eat the other. I'll save you. Ayumi. It hurts, but I can't run. No, evil spirit, let her go. I banished... I... what? I brandished the Book of Shadows in front of me like a shield, attempting to intimidate the attacker. If you don't, I will destroy you. It's okay. I can finally be with everyone else. Who was that? <gasps> hey! Sayaka. I think that's her name, right? Out of the blue, a girl I've never seen before now stood in the creature's path. She was wearing ununiquely designed green pins in her hair. Looks more close. Look more closely. Her body has slight sheen to it and was practically translucent. You stupid dog. What do you think you're doing? Sayaka? The rampage in Inimaru showed no signs of having comprehended Sayaka's words. He's really come here looking for me? I mean, do you even have a brain in that blockhead of yours? You're such an idiot. You should know better, you dumb mutt. Now she seems to have gotten him, gotten through to him. He stopped biting down on Ayak, on Ayako's, oh God, on Aiko's, releasing his grip ever so slightly. Damn, Aiko's been through the ringer through this whole entire game. Fucking got, got fucking pushed down the steps. Been getting like her head bitten off and shit. Been burned up by spiritual flames. Now she's getting her neck bitten off. Jesus. You really are just pathetic mongrel. How can you let yourself turn into something like that? Saika's tone had a slight waver to it, relaying her heartlessness. But her berating of Inimaru has, was working. His eyes were beginning to swell up with tears. How do you not understand that you have a perfectly suitable girl right here? Am I speaking with an accent or something? Damn boneheaded pooch. What's with all the dog shit going on? <laughs> Why do I feel like I'm watching like an episode of Inuyasha? What's going on right now? <laughs> he was full on bawling now, and nothing seemed like it could slow his tears. You're just such a dumbass. This is no one's fault, you know? No one could have known this would happen, so don't blame Iko, okay? Do you understand? She was less reassuring him, and more commanding him. Inamara released Iko from his mouth entirely. And became very quiet. Good boy. Echo, I'm gonna take this dolt with me. But whenever your time comes to a close, let's all meet up again, okay? Echo's face was glazed over with tears as Inimaru sh as Inimaru's. She nodded, unable to even raise her hand. Her head, my bad. I'm so sorry. Thank you, Sayaka, and Haruyuki. With one final soft, serene flash of light, Sayaka and Inamaru both dissipated into the air and were gone from sight. I go. I'm sorry. That was very unlike me. Hey, at least that's resolved.
All right. There's an eyeball over there. It's weird. So the most monstrous explosion rang out, accompanied by the violent quake that rocked the very foundation of the school. Rock the boat, rock the boat, baby. The earthquake had triggered an unfortunate side effect. The hole connecting to the underground passage had been completely sealed off. This meant that Mochita and the others would have no choice but to find another way out. Why do they need to find a way out? They have the Ever After Stones. Where are we? Which part of Heavenly Host is this? By the way, where's Yuka? That's a very good question. Maybe it would be best if we stop trying to put everything into context of the old Heavenly Host. Either way, the only choice we got is to climb these stairs. So let's get moving. Where's Yuka? I guess Naomi's out of commission because of uh, her eyeball. We stabbed it. Alright. Eh, we'll play a Satoshi. I need to actually see him do shit. We managed to escape through the hole before it collapsed and went, and went our way through numerous passages, finally arriving at the base of the enormous bell tower. Oh, there's Yuka and Naomi. As soon as we got there, however, there was another huge explosion. The whole school rocked beneath our feet. I was certain the class rep and Aiko must have felt these blasts as well. We could only hope beyond... Well... <coughs> it could only hope beyond hope that they were both alright. Monstrous explosions continued to echo through the bell tower repeatedly. And violent tremors shook up... Shook us against... Against... Shook us again and again, seemingly without end. The hell? The seventh pillar, it's all right. The Sephiroth of Knowledge was, indeed, lit up, spewing its, its disquieting green flames every which way. Aye, Shinazaki. Let's, let's go. I'll carry you, Naomi. Come on. Okay. What? Am I real? <laughs> I'm really carrying Naomi. All right, let's go. Come on. It's time that Satoshi literally pulled his own weight, and others. Give me a reason why everybody wants to just be with you so much. You're still not coming to life. I don't get it. Come on, Naomi, let's go. Huh. So why are we trying to run up here if we have the Ever After Stones? We can just get the hell out of here. I guess they're coming back to get Aiko, maybe? About time he showed up. The Sephiroth of Knowledge wasn't the only thing to be found at the top of the tower. There waiting for us on the landing was Magari Mizuki. Holding... Holding Sasuke, uh, Sasuke Mizuhara by the neck. You! She let go of Sasuke, who trembled to the ground like a... Trembled? Yeah, who tumbled to the ground like a rag. Sasuke! She's alive, but only just. That's why I brought her along. Aiko and Ayumi have gone ahead to the core of the Nirvana. What? This world doesn't exactly follow the rules of human logic and in intellect. See? The Sephiroth of Knowledge is reacting to the Nirvana's awakening. The school only got another few minutes at best. If you don't want to get crushed, you should probably use your Ever After Stones and get the fuck out of here. What about you? Sachi broke mine. Magari flashed a bitter smile and showed off the rubble that was once a pair of Ever Afterstones. She seemed almost proud of what she's been through. Ms. Kwan then produced her custom-made PL promotion stones, which had also seen better days. They were full of cracks, with the strange blue gas seeping <coughs> with a strange blue gas seeping out here and there. Same here, I'm afraid. Then gaining spiritual energy, mine are losing it as we speak. You serious? Miss Kuon.
With our forces combined, we can escape. Guess we're all destined to die here then, huh? This sucks ass. I wonder if Waldo's worried about me. Who the fuck is Waldo? <laughs> Megari scratched her head and looked for all the for all the world like she regained herself to her wait what? Hold up. I had a stroke. <laughs> Megari scratched her head and looked for all the world. Like she resigned like she resigned herself from her fate. It was a sign it was a sign it was a sight entirely unlike her. There wasn't anything we can do at this point but stand there and helplessly watch the pillar pulsate, knowing that it could blow at any moment. And it was then... Sorry about that, I yawned. And it was then, when we all resigned ourselves to our fate as Megari had, that Ms. Kuan suddenly locked down her wristwatch and spoke. Locked down? My bad. Looked down at her wristwatch and spoke. Satoshi? Yes? Was I a good teacher to you in this world? Oh, in your world, I guess. Excuse me? Nagashima said her name once, I think. Miss Yui, was it? Yeah. Why? How do you know about our world? Misato mentioned this before, didn't he? About how you can tell a lot from the color of a person's aura? And I can tell right away that you were from another time. A different past. Well, Miss Yui was funny. And kind of ditzy. And the best teacher we ever had, really. But in a lot of ways, you're exactly the same as her. You're kind and fun. I love you too, Miss Kuan. Well, that escalated real quickly. I was still straddling Satoshi's back. And could, bar could barely form a coherent sentence. But I somehow knew, if I were to ever say it, that now would be the time. Thank you. Miss Kuan smiled brightly. I have a lot of regrets, but what you said just now makes them all insignificant. Those words are my saving grace. Even a self-proclaimed genius like you can't get sentimental from time to time, eh? I can make false calculations. And I know a whole storage house of information. But that just means I have an abnormal an abnormal brain. Nothing more. There's certainly nothing nothing genius about it. Are you so are you so fascinated, for example, by someone who's able to see precisely how much time she has left in this existence? Squan turned to her rich watch so everyone could see. The counter displayed the number 300. Oh god, she's gonna die! And it was counting down, second by second. That watch. It's my life, it's my life clock. I didn't want to waste a single second I had, you see? Life clock, a device capable of reading and displaying one's own lifespan. Ordinarily, I would put a... I would put any stock in the accuracy of such a ridiculous sounding contraption. But, this is Miss Kuan we're talking about. Thinking back to everything she accomplished in a short time, we knew her. And all the technology she devised through PL, I couldn't help but believe every word she was saying. No matter how preposterous those words might have been, nor how much I wished for them to be fabrications. So, you shared your abilities with the world simply because people demanded it. And in doing so, you shaved years off your life. I heard your body had aged up to about 90, and you were close to the end. Guess I heard right. Oh man, I mean for 90, for a 90 year old, she looking hella fine. Squan smiled and slowly walked over to the pillar. I'm going to destroy this pillar. Everyone stand back. Well, I guess that's why she swallowed uh, Sachi's teeth. She's like, don't worry, you'll be reborn. JK, I'm going to die too. She had the other baby tooth from Sachi in her hand. With the child's spirit energy, I can do it. According to my calculations, it should work. Miss Kuan. 
No, my second favorite character. <laughs> Always remember, your lives will go on, with or without me. No matter the hardships, don't ever give up. Miss Cool. Stay safe, everyone. No. No! I screamed, and I cried. I lashed out. This wasn't right. This shouldn't have been the end for her. Nakashima? Hot Springs of Satoshi's house can heal the body and mind alike. You should take a dip with Yuka again sometime. And Kishinuma? Make sure you take your quiz. I spoke with Mr. Yamazaki about it. I will. Come now, you two. Boys shouldn't cry. You need to hurry. Neither this pillar nor I have much time left. No! Miss Kuan! Still on Satoshi's back, as he descended the stairs, I screamed. There had to be another way. There had to be. Magari was the only one left who hadn't said anything yet. I won't forget you. There aren't many geniuses like you in this world. And the Martubas will withdraw from spiritual medicine. You have my word. I trust you'll keep it. Also, I'll look after Aiko. And with that, Magari followed us down the stairs, away from the pillar. Once Miss Kuan had confirmed we were all out of range, she pressed her hand and Sachi's tooth upon the monolith. She suddenly began to breathe heavier, as if she were running out of air. Her years were physically catching up to her, all at once. She began to feel as old as her body appeared. She looked down at her watch. There were only twenty seconds left. I really don't want to die. I don't want to die. With nothing left to hold them back, the tears began to stream down Miss Kwan's face. The counter was down to ten. Miss Kwan's arm began to fuse with the pillar, as if she were being pulled in. I guess the fact that I don't want to die means I lived a truly happy life. The upper portion of the bell tower lit up with a blinding flash and exploded with tremendous force. The entire school shook harder than ever. Each of us was blown clean off the stairs and knocked unconscious in the process. A piece of heavenly hose blew out, leaving an enormous crater in its wake. A dimension of empty expanse. Expanse? <laughs> right and white. A world without a single sound. There I stood, dumbfounded. I couldn't speak. Where am I? That's what I wanted to say. Satoshi. Miss Kuan. It's like a miracle that I'm able to see you here. I was staring at my watch, thinking about how I wasn't afraid of dying. I lived my life knowing that when my lifespan ended, that would be it. I accepted my fate and resolved to, resolved to do what needed to be done within the limited time I had. But then I met you, and I fell in love for the very first time. And when I thought about how much I wanted to live, the counter stopped. Love truly is in many splendors. Even though you came from a different world and probably don't even remember the day we met, we're still connected. I wonder if you'll find yet another teacher in my place once you return to the real world. I'll be kind of jealous, but do say hi for me. To the me who isn't me, won't you? Bye-bye now. My face was coated in tears and snot. I stood up, arm outstretched, but there was nothing I could do. She was gone. Where am I?
Oh my god, Aiko, you fell on glass. Jesus, fuck. Are you okay, Ayumi? Yeah, but that earthquake was incredible. Come on, we have to hurry. We do have to hurry. <coughs> this stream is going on longer than I thought it would. Ow, fuck! Oh god, I'm here again. Oh, there's a face staring at me. Where do I go? This way? Oh, uh, ow! And where the hell am I going? I guess in here? Oh, that's a lot. That's a lot of things going on here. Uh... Uh-huh. Anything back here? What? Document 4 obtained? Oh no, I gotta search for documents now? Ow! I gotta stop doing that. Document 1. Okay, are they all in here? 2? Five, three. Uh huh. The soldiers bore witness to the slaughter and came to deplore it. The witch on the skewer died, not had hate in her heart. Mother peer upon the kin, hugged them tight to hide the deplorable axe. The Lord says, Thou shalt rebuke the massacre and meet hatred with reason. Thou, ca thou can't, can't, cast, what? Guard against the pike, merely smile when others look upon you. I'm going to assume the words capitalize are very important. Actually, I'm going to run back in here real quick. Check this side. Okay, nothing. I got some scriptures. Oops. I got some scriptures, so I'm gonna save. What's this? Doors being eaten away by Nirvana. Oh, nothing over here. Okay, that's... <coughs> that's fine. I guess, maybe. Glass over there. Glass over there. Okay, well, how the fuck do I get out then? Hmm. Is there a sixth one? Number six? How we doing on darkening? We're doing fine. That's good. I feel I'm a bit congested. Ah, fuck. Huh. I guess I'm gonna head back this way then. Um, this is where we came from. Something in the mailbox is a talisman. So what the hell am I supposed to do? Ow! Why the fuck do I keep stepping on that? Huh? Okay, when I checked that, there was laughing. I'm not a fan of that. Oh, 
or strike by lightning. Glass ball obtained. Possesses some spiritual energy. Alright, maybe we gotta look for a place to use this. Door won't open. Um... Back over here, then. Oh, shit! Damn it! I stepped on it again like an idiot. There's nothing over there. And I, I don't think there's, yeah, there's no doorway over here. What the fuck? <coughs> so I guess I just gotta go back. I don't want to, but I guess I gotta, all right? Even though the book said that it was this way. Still an evil spirit in here? Looks big enough to fit through? Oh, fuck that. Oh well, time to die. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, this is not good. Loose board. From within the sculpture? Alright, I'm gone. You don't gotta tell me to, to leave there. Want me out of there? I'm gone, baby. Almost stepped on the glass again. Like a moron. All right, this way. Oh! Fuck you. That's not good. Uh-huh. You know, that's cool. That's cool. I have a talisman. I have a talisman! Ah! Hey, can you destroy these for me? Okay. Alright. No, that's cool. That's fine. Uh-oh. Oh! 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 Follow me! Ow! What the fuck hit me? You couldn't have hit me, come on. You didn't even swing. How are you hitting me without swinging? Aha! I have outsmarted you. Name tag on corpse. Died swiftly by an unknown cause, his body skewered post-mortem. My darkening's doing fine. Okay, well these are all warnings. These are all clearly warnings. Alright, okay. <coughs> there was a signal white door in the back of the crystal-filled room, along with an enormous red stain across. The walls were... I'm sorry, I was trying to read the words behind them. The walls were lined with crucifix corpses, what looked to be Martuba investigation teams sent in before us. It is a head. Uh, I, I had a hard time reading that for some reason. It's a head! Book of Shadows spoke once again. We made it. Aiko, please turn back. You certainly are persistent. 
Please, I mean it. If you don't, there's a good chance you're gonna get in my way. Iko was at a loss for words. I'm sorry. I draped my head and apologized for a sudden outburst. I intended to be looking out for Aiko, manufacturing an excuse to keep her out of harm's way, but it came across harshly. It worked, however. Aiko hung back and I stepped through the door on my own. Oh! I got scared by bats! Inside was another realm entirely, one in which heaven, heaven and earth alike stand... Oh God. Heaven and earth alike sat in ruins. The sky was a twisted coil of red and black, and the ground, or what was left of it, was a little more than a black mass. The floorboards from the school stretched before me, converging at a, shine, at a shining staircase leading up into the unknown. And high above, all else loomed a conspicuous... Conspicuous. 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 I can't say the word. Object. Shining. Brightest of all. Is that the Nirvana? Shinozaki? Why are there two Yukas? Another mass of floorboards below me was Kishinuma, Mochita, uh, Nakashima, and Magari. Yuka and Satsuki. Oh, Satsuki. How is Satsuki still alive? Didn't her head, like, open up? Like a Venus flytrap? Yuka and Sasuke were there too, though they were both clearly unconscious. You guys. Are you alright, Shinazaki? What is that? I cracked a, sm a slight smile at Mochita's panicked reaction. Just stay alive, you guys. I'm gonna go settle things. Shinazaki, you're not seriously planning on... So only the bearer of the book can go ahead, huh? Don't you go dying on me now. My mind was made up. I was gonna do this no matter what. I took my first step on the staircase. Hey, Shinozaki, wait. Shinozaki? Class rep? Nagashima addressed me with much effort. Um, what? Oh, okay. She addressed me with much effort as she seemed to be in tremendous pain. I was confused for a moment. I was like, what? It was, it was immediately some comfort to receive so much support from my friends. No save point beyond this? Okay, cool. The stairs faded away behind me, quite literally. Each one vanished as soon as I stepped off, actively rejecting the notion that anyone but the bearer of the book could be here. I continued climbing until I hit the top, which left me right at the foot of the shining object in the sky. From here on up is... I can fly with the book! The last of the steps disappear, leaving me floating in midair. I clasp my arms around the book of shadows. Compose yourself. Regain your balance. Okay. I love how the book is kind of my friend. Kind of. I took the book under my arm and stared and stared. Yeah, stared. Wait, what? I can't even read no more. <laughs> I took the book under my arm and started leveling myself out a bit. Almost immediately, my vision began to blur. It looked like the world around me was melting. It took me a moment to realize that it was actually motion blurred due to the extreme rate of speed at which I was flying. The shining object was getting closer and closer. Who the hell are you? I'm really scared, but I'm not going to lose this. I've done a lot of hesitating, a lot of running away, and a lot of regretting up till now. And I've always been crawling into my shell whenever things got too intense, convincing myself that I was unimportant in the overwhelmed scheme of things. Overwhelm? My bad. Overall scheme of things. I couldn't... I don't know why I said that. But now I realize that I'm walking a different road entirely, and I've made up my mind. Watch me, sis. My eyes are open now, and I'm never closing them again. Ow! What the hell? The flowing events all happened in rapid succession. The runic letters on my thighs from the blowback at Yoshi Shinozaki's estate began glowing red and spouting and sporting blood. Sporting? Spurting? Spurting. Spurting. That's the word. 
As I was observing and confirming this, four small blue lights were drawn to me like moss to a flame. Once they got within arm's length, they stopped moving and just hovered. I guess these are the kids? What are they? I had a feeling I already knew the answer. These four lights were giving off gentle, caring, friendly glows. They were the purest and strongest lights I've encountered here. I felt more reassured than ever just by looking at them. What are you? My in my mind, I could understand them without the need for words. Their aura was as inviting as it could be. It's you guys, is it? I began to cry. Oh wait, no, it's, um, it's, it's, uh, the teacher, Morshigi, and those guys, yeah. This was no time to lament or mourn, though. The, ru the runic, oh god, the runic letters on my arm now began glowing red and spouting blood, just as the ones on my thighs had moved before. Had moments before. Ow. What the? Fight it. It's the Nirvana. The Book of Shadows spoke again. Fight it. If you die here, you lose your right to bear me. Unbind me and master the dark magic. Oh god, QTE options. QTE... What? When the Nirvana addresses you in Firth Hark, you must answer back and press the- Oh god, oh no, I don't- I didn't- I didn't- I didn't- I didn't put it to memory, Jesus. Oh. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Ow! Oh no! I got it wrong! My friends! They protect me! No! I don't know what I'm doing! I'm literally just guessing what the hell I have to do. Because I don't know, I don't remember the words. I didn't commit it to memory. Did I beat you? I woke to a white expense stretched out before me and realized I was still in midair. It almost seemed like I was above the clouds looking down on the world below. What is that? Finally, the light from the Book of Shadows faded, its power spent. I immediately lost my balance and fell through the sea of clouds, landing with a thump. My friends protected me. Uh? Before me, I saw a young blonde girl sitting in the nude. FBI is gonna be knocking on this door any moment. The entire area was so blindingly bright, though, that I couldn't make out who she was. The clouds clung to the ground, even here. Giving me, giving my surroundings their unearthly glow, pure white as if they were the aftermath of a blizzard. I could make out new details the longer I focused, and now notice that the girl before me had almost translucent blue eyes with no eyebrows. She was gazing, she was gazing fixedly at me. I could only think of this being as someone who existed beyond all human knowledge. Are you the will of Nirvana? I addressed her with a fearful break in my voice. But she just continued staring at me in total silence. Return to this book. I raised the Book of Shadows, but the girl expression did not change. As I descended, as a descendant of one who summoned you in <coughs> initially, I'd like to apologize. You were just sleeping, weren't you? Huh? I have no idea what you're saying. The girl spoke, but I couldn't understand what she was saying. I wonder what language that is. The girl stood and began approaching me. Don't you drop the book! Pick that shit back up! I tried to take a step back, tripped and fell. This is when I first noticed my surroundings. The cloud had receded a bit, revealing no snow broth but a thick forest of half-dead trees. The girl approached me slowly, one step at a time, and then in an almost rem- uh, rem- uh, remithic manner, I can't say the word. Pick up the damn book! 
Her mouth open wide. She's gonna eat me. Ah! And a large branch popped out from the back of her throat. Suddenly, she was crucifixed directly in front of me. Crucified, my bad, not crucifixed. Blood splattered everywhere. I was completely drenched. I screamed and tried to move back, but my legs had given out. Meanwhile, the book of shadows on the ground, it was the furthest thing from my mind at the moment. Then, from behind the skewered girl, I caught sight of another girl who looked just like her, a flaming body hanging from a tree. It swung very slightly in place, creaking and groaning with each revolution. Hmm. I have no idea what they're saying. But I can assume that they're going against... <coughs> I can assume that what they're saying is something along the lines of, uh... Of burn in the flames, suffer. I can hear Anc Ancestry's yells yells in the same foreign language coming from a hysterical man and woman in the forest what's going on I shifted my focus from the burning hang girl on the tree back to the girl in front of me and she too was now completely burnt she continued walking towards me little by little step by painful de deliberate step and when she finally reached me she put her hands around my neck and began to choke me Jesus, fuck. Thinking quickly, however, I grabbed the girl's arms, pulled her in, and gave her the biggest hug I could muster. Just like what the scripture said. I may not understand your words, but your message comes across loud and clear. The scream of agony speaks the life of what was violently cut short. I don't know what exactly happened to you, but I know someone else whose story is probably similar to yours. The burned girl stopped moving entirely. I guess I got in her attention. She was always, always so sad. And even after life was taken, she still loved her mother dearly. But nobody ever forgave her. She suffered and suffered. And though all she wanted was for someone to help her, she wound up losing herself, eventually drowning under the weight of her curse. My eyes began to overflow with tears. I loosened my grip slightly, and the burned girl began to stroke my cheek delicately, yet strangely. You're right to feel the hatred and rage you do, but... This never-ending chain of sorrow needs to be broken by someone. And it may not be... In a... In a valuable job... God. <coughs> invaluable... I can't say the word. Invaluable, right? Job, but the duty falls upon you. She so continued to stroke my cheek, but then also raised another hand to my eye, stuck out her finger, and jammed it right into my eye socket. Pain shot through me in an incredible wave. From somewhere deep within my head, I could hear the sounds of a foreign body digging around my muscle tissue. Her finger had directly cut open my optical nerve. Between the intense agony and deep, disturbing sound, I felt that I was on the verge of, in of insanity. This must have been the same pain the girl is feeling. If I can't understand what she went through, I'll never understand her. I won't run away. That decided, I allowed my body to give in to the conv convulsions that I began racking it. It was trying not to consciously focus- I was trying not to consciously focus on the pain. Instead, focusing on the girl. I felt as if I was mere moments of choking on my own tongue, when the girl's finger finally dug my right eye out of its socket completely. Words could not describe the extreme pain. I crumpled up completely and began, sh and began shivering. The girl then put the sticky blood eyeball in her palm displaying it triumphantly in view of other eye for a moment before squeezing it with every ounce of strength she had. I still had some elasticity to it, so it expanded in her right hand until the length had roughly doubled. But it could only take so much, eventually exploding to milky white and red goo. Yet I still refused to show any signs of intimidation. I did not react. 
I waited until the girl's eyes met mine, then flashed her a soft smile. She looked genuinely puzzled. And then she threw herself at me, and our lips met. What? Huh. I hugged her once more, in spite of my trembling arms. A huge shockwave shook the air, transforming into light and shattering around me. No. Please, no. Shinozaki! I could hear Kishinuma and the others yelling out in shock, having witnessed everything from the bottom of the stairs. Aiko was there, too. When the light settled, I was standing at the top of those red... Those mystic red stairs, which had now reformed and stretched down below me to the remnants of Heavenly Host. I held my, my gorged out right eye socket in my right hand, and the Book of Shadows in my left. I slowly, solemnly descended the stairs of light. Guys! Shinozaki! You're okay. Class rep? Shinozaki, your eye. Eh, I guess me and Naomi can kind of be eye buddies. Kind of, at least she gets hers back. You're injured. I'm alright. It's a small price to pay for helping the girl move on. The Book of Shadows in my hand had a white sheen to it now. I gave a weak smile and slowly formulated in my mind the exact words I wanted to say. I'm sorry, everyone. I know I put you through a horrible mess. No matter how many times I apologize, they know it'll never be enough. What I did is unforgivable. But I won't let you guys get hurt anymore. I'll protect you from this here, and this Nirvana. What are you saying? Did something happen, Shinozaki? This doesn't seem like you. Don't worry. I'm okay. I just resolved to protect the people I hold dear. For real this time. Hey, Shinozaki. Kijinuma seemed especially protruded by this revolution. Revolution? Resolution? My bad. He must have thought I was on the verge of sacrificing myself for the greater good or something, and rightly so. But the section of floor where I stood was up too high for Kishinuma or any, or any of the others to reach me. They couldn't stop me. Not anymore. Shinozaki! I'm a descendant of the Shinozaki family too. So just like Sachiko, I'm gonna swallow this Nirvana and seal it away. Like Sachiko? You can't possibly. I've been too embarrassed to look at my friends in the eyes while informing them of this. But knew I had to now. It was my last chance. I looked up at them. Cheeks are red. Now, cheeks are a little red. I guess this is goodbye. I giggled as playfully as I could. Enough with the bullshit, Shinozaki. We've been through enough already. Don't do this. Kishinomo was downright hysterical. But I still kept the same bright smile on my face. I wouldn't let go of it, no matter what. It's not all bad, you know. I saw in Yoshi's memories. Before Heavenly Host was made, and Sachiko sealed away the Nirvana, the person it created for, whose existence had been erased, was able to get it back. His existence, you mean? I might be able to do the same for Shinohara, Suzumoto, Morishiki, and Miss Yui. I might be able to at least put everyone's memories of them back where they belong. Shinozaki. I'm happy. I have to say goodbye, but at least I still remain in everyone's thoughts. I'll still exist. And that's a pretty good deal in the end. Shinozaki! It's just much too sad a fate to be erased by the Nirvana. Shinohara, Suzumoto, Morishigi, and Miss Yui. Is this really what you want? You need to stop thinking about other people and start thinking about yourself for a change. My facade had finally cracked. A single tear rolled down my cheek. 
then another, and another. And with impeccable timing, the Book of Shadows spoke, striking me while I was down. Unfortunately, there is no saving you. Controlling such dark magic requires equal compensation. Your spirit energy is no match for Sakiko's, so your very existence itself will be taken as payment. The hell? Those who come into direct contact with the Nirvana must accept the consequences of their actions. Those who alter the fabric of existence, doubtly so. All memories of you will be forfeit. You will be remembered by none. Everything connected to your identity will be exercised from reality. Choose wisely. Shinazaki. Hey, this isn't a joke. You won't exist anymore. Choosing that for yourself willingly is just asinine. Kishinuma. For a split second, I let my true feelings show, but then immediately forced a smile. But if everybody's lives can go back to normal... So fucking what? You don't get it at all. You need to stop this, Shinozaki. Isn't there any other way? Yeah, class rat. I don't want to lose you or anyone else. I'm through with people vanishing from my life. So please, just stop. Don't do this. Black magic doesn't come with a price. But even I don't want a future without you. Oh, my bad. It does come with a price. My bad. I absolutely cannot agree with this course of action. Thank you all for the kind words. But this is something somebody has to do. And that somebody's gonna be me. You'd always keep the Nirvana intact and remain as its jailer instead. Are you certain the path you've chosen is the one you wish to walk? I won't leave this problem for the next generation to deal with. That just wouldn't be right, would it? Then I shall accompany you. But can a normal human like yourself truly consume this entire Nirvana? I just have to swallow it all, right? I can handle that. Shave the piece of flesh from the wall of Heavenly Host. Fully prepared to illustrate this point. Without thinking too hard about what I was doing and ignoring every impulse in my body, I shoved the fitted meat in my mouth, chewed it, and gulped it down. My face warped in horror as I felt the morsel slid, slid its way down my throat. I might as well have swallowed fire. It somehow triggered my back to pop open slightly and began spurting blood. The bits of flesh I was unable to stomach were then quickly and rapidly ungracefully regurgitated onto the floor. Everybody get out. Hurry. There's a hole leading back to the real world at the school's interest way. I then picked up the flesh I spat out tried to cram it back in my mouth. I was determined to keep it down. It would have been a lot easier if I hadn't been glaring at me from my hands, however. Wait. Stop. Just stop. I turned to face Kishinuma, who was practically begging me not to go through with this. But it's not like I wanted to. I just had to. Stop this. We don't want you to disappear from our lives. Not without a fight. I smiled. The sentiment was truly heartwarming. You always did look out for me. Don't think I didn't notice. Even if you forget I exist, I'll never forget you, Kishinuma. Kishinuma's eyes swelled up with tears. When you patted me on the head, it made me really happy. I smiled again, even while tears were streaming down my face. This time after swallowing the wall meat, blood began spurting from my head. Yet finally, my actions seemed to have an effect, as the wall in front of me began to fizzle away in a blood-red mist ultimately vanishing before my eyes. Stop. Stop doing that! To him and all. Kishinuma collapsed to his knees. Another shockwave rocked the whole, the whole of the dimension. 
It was so enormous that the ceiling fell, and a nearby wall began to crack. Whatever rickety parts of the school were left had began crumbling around us. You're really something, Ayumi Shinazaki. Let's get out of here while we still can. Come on, get up. You don't want her death to be in vain. It's not like you can stop her either way, not from here. Let her do what she feels she has to. She's the successor of Sachigo's bloodline. It's her right. I'll never forget you, Shinazaki. No matter what. Big brother? And Satsuki, you're okay. Yeah. The Satsuki's still out cold. Get your asses moving! Do you want to be eaten alive alongside the Nirvana? I'll leave you behind if I have to. Yoshiki, let's go. Before he left the area, Kishinumi looked Kishinumi. <laughs> Kishinuma looked back one last time. But I was out of sight by that point. Stop looking back! We carefully but swiftly made our way through the rubble of the former bell tower. Along the way, Yoshiki paused for a moment and looked up at the stairs and caught a glimpse of Misato's clothes. Those are. So, he died too, huh? It was only a moment distraction, however. Yoshiki, like the rest of us, very quickly continued on his way. Yuka! Big brother, I'm scared. The entrance is right there. Just get your asses out of here. Man, where is... <laughs> Magari peace the fuck out. Just a little further. We can make it. But we have to hurry. Yoshiki got got up to follow us, but instead he stood there. He wouldn't take a single step. Kishinoma, what's wrong? Naomi still in my back saw Yoshiki's motionless form and knew something wasn't quite right. Is she just going to be erased from all our minds? Huh? What's going to happen when she eats the entire Nirvana? Will the world actually be able to go back to normal? He seemed to be caught up in a loop of doubt. He was trying to work through something in his head. He didn't seem ready to move again until he succeeded. Yoshiki, what are you doing? If we don't hurry... Right now, she's in there. She's inside the Nirvana. Yoshiki, wait! He turned back towards the ruins of Heavenly Host and ran off. You guys get the hell out of here. And just like that, he was gone. Fell and Rebel blocking us off from the passageway. He darted it into. God, no. Yoshiki? Try as we might, there's no pursuing him. He made his choice. And there was nothing we can do to change things now. We have no choice. We have to go now. School began to shake even more violently. Yoshiki. Shinazaki. Not only was it shaking, but crack, but creaking and groaning as well. The school was definitely not going to stay intact for much longer at all. The red and black sky began to get sucked into heavenly hosts, like smoke into exhaust vent. With the beautiful, clear night uh, it got scenery of the real world peeking out from behind it. And slowly, the blue sky of day crept into view. Outstanding. What? <laughs> <coughs> Outstanding. My bad. Outstanding both the moon and the horrors of the Nirvana alike. The six pillars disappeared from Earth, leaving only giant craters in their wake. The rising sun shone upon the death-written world, severing, serving as a beacon of light and hope for people who suffered beneath what could have been, and for a time, was an endless night. In a place that exists outside this world, a curse built upon darkness and sorrow swept through like a river overflowing its banks into the valley below. But the flood was dammed through the blood sacrifice of the true what? Of the truly benevolent girl, whose very existence was lost in the process. 
The fate to die cannot be overturned. But the former existence of your sadly departed friends has been restored to this reality. Their memories, their achievements. From that, however, a new sorrow floods the world and the healing process begins anew. The baton of guardian has been passed down from one generation to the next. And somewhere in this world, I'm certain she must still bear it, protecting us all from deep uncover of night. She's been erased from our memories. However, so wherever she is, there can never truly be any communication between us again. But, in this future where countless worlds and fates have merged. Naomi, food's ready. Coming. With a sigh of relief, Nakashima stood up and left her room. Next to the photo of her classmates, another photo stood on her desk, taken at Mochita's house. I'm certain we'll see her again. Hold the pride of the protector of power in your heart. Hey, we did it. Ugh. It's a long ass game. I'm gonna lower, I'm gonna lower this a little bit because I'm definitely gonna get copyrighted like a motherfucker. That's for sure. Uh, oops, I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to click it and get rid of it. Yikes. <laughs> I guess I skipped it. Oh. I didn't mean to skip it. I just wanted to lower the volume. Oops. Sorry about that. And here I sat in my own house, in Hinoe's room. In the corner, in a wheelchair, expressionless and empty. Is she older? She seems older now. Guess I'll uh, boost up the, the audio again. With the Book of Shadows on my lap, there was no fire in my eyes, no life. I just sat and stared at a single point in front of me. Book of Shadows can use to make everybody happy. The reflection stared back from the mirror wasn't me. It was Sachi, the girl in black. Sachi's eyes was covered in her bangs. Her expression was impossible to read. She was unmoving, unreadable. Undetainable. Just a reflection. A reflection of me. Will protect everyone. Best as I... Even if it's by myself. The book of shadows in my hands darted its eyes around frantically, its tongue dangling limply outside the frame of the tome itself. The house sat in silence for a moment. And then the doorbell rang again. The reflection in the mirror was no longer Sachi. It was just Ayumi. Just me. The Book of Shadows reverted too, showing itself once more as a plain ordinary, plain ordinarily entirely standard leather bound book. The blue-white stones were tossed up into the air, where they danced a bit before tumbling back down. 
I could easily catch them with one hand. I looked up at the white house in front of me and smiled, a toothy grin. And I held onto those stones tightly. For they were my precious ever after stones. So, okay, wait, so I'm guessing that they're both dead, but they exist within the a little pocket space in Nirvana. And within there is just her, Sachi, and then Kishinuma's spirit. And I guess he found her? Soulful testimonies. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh no. There's a lot. From Mako. Extra chapter 7. I'm just assuming that the extra chapters are just, you know, other characters. I got some, uh, some achievements. I got two achievements, actually. Well, let's see those bonuses. Soulful testimonies. So... If I'm going off of Book of Shadows, Soulful Testimonies, it's just the voice actors talking about, uh, what they, um, oh god. Oh no, I'm missing, I'm missing a bunch. Oh no. <laughs> talking about what they thought about the story and, you know, what they're excited, what they're excited, what they're excited about in the future. Um, let me see, new chapter, chapter 10, extra chapters, yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna look into the extra chapters and see if they have anything that, you know, anything that is uh, crucial to the story to understand. If so, then we'll come back and do those. If not, then it's fine. I do want to listen to the soulful testimonies, but first of all, the stream's going way longer than I thought it would. And then, yeah, definitely way longer than I thought it would. And then second of all, uh, they might be, they might be long, they might be short, and, uh, <laughs> we just don't have time to get into it. So, I guess self, self testimonies, uh, it's gonna be a little incentive for you to go out and buy the game yourself, and, you know, play it, have fun, and maybe play the extra chapters, if, the, if it's not too important for the story, right? If it's not important for the story, we won't look at it. If it is, I'll come back to another stream. And we'll do another stream of Corpse Party, but if not, this is it for Corpse Party Blood Drive. We made it to the end. And god damn it. I liked it. <laughs> I liked it. It's long. It took a lot of time to do. Um there are some things that I do wanna I do want to go into what I think about the game, but honestly, we just don't have time to get into it because I might sit here and talk for like 20 minutes or something like that. So we're going to end the stream. All right. Next time I stream will either be sometime tomorrow or, uh, you know, on the schedule, there's um, there's the, the other night that I stream. So next time I stream is definitely going to be. Um, let's call it Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. We're going to do more to that at this point in time. We made it to Chinatown. All right. Currently, uh, just to reiterate, currently on the channel, uh, Scooby-Doo 100, what is it called? Scooby-Doo Night of 100 Frights. That's going up. It was supposed to be a playthrough for Halloween, but, you know, my schedule got fucked up, so uploading it now. Uh, along with that, the last two parts for Danganronpa V3 should be going up this week, so please look forward to those. And, um, besides that, a new playthrough is going to be coming out with that. And, I guess, once Danganronpa's done, get Danganronpa? Ugh. Once Danganronpa, or, or Danganronpa, as it's supposed to be pronounced... Once that's done getting upload, I'll start uploading course party for you guys and stuff like that. Um that's pretty much it. I'm not sure if the poll on the YouTube channel is still active, but if it is and you haven't already, please head over 
to the community tab on the YouTube page and head down to the poll where uh, you can vote on what type of marathon we'll be doing in the near future. Right now, Pokemon is winning by a landslide. And, you know, get some more votes in on that. If you haven't voted, go ahead and do it. You might be able to make a difference. And uh, that's pretty much it. Down below in the description, if you're on YouTube, first of all, if you're on YouTube, if you liked it, please leave a like. It helps out the channel, helps with recognition and stuff like that. If um <coughs> if you're not, please subscribe. Click on that bell, notifies you when new videos come out and stuff like that. And stuff for the community tab. Updates always go up on the community tab, most likely. And in the description below is a link to the Twitter. If you care about that. And a link to Twitch so you can catch these lives. If you're watching this on well, if you're watching live, first of all, thank you very much. If you're watching this on the VODs, thank you very much as well. And if you can, try and catch it live. If not, that's okay. If you haven't followed me on this already and you enjoyed the stuff, at least follow me. Thank you. That will help out a lot. And that's pretty much it. That's all I got to say. I am going to go and now take a shower. <laughs> uh, I've been sitting here for a while. I need to take a shower. All right. Once again, I want to say thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you in the next video. Stay happy. Stay healthy. And take care.